we go. All right. So we're in your domain now. Yeah. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your screens. Uh, yeah, we know we're not in the original, you know, the usual studio, the usual the Zoom call. Uh, we're sitting here with someone who's been off of YouTube for the last four years and has just returned with the comeback of the century right here. You know, if if if, if we could legally play, you know, some LL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out right now, don't call <laughs> it a comeback, I've been here for years, we would. But today, I have a very special guest. You know him. You love him. You've seen him on the channel. It's been it's been four years. At least five, I think. It's I've starting been. five now. Yeah. I think 2019, 2019 Midsummer Scream is like something you Did helped I us. Go there? You, you helped us big Was time that now. when I helped you guys? Yeah. I thought it was 2018, to be honest. No, I think it was 2019 because that was when Sammy was, was on the channel. And that was okay. when we did like all the podcasts, everything. Like yeah, you yeah. Were, you were I clutch. remember it was those two girls that... The uh, fuck I forgot. Oh, name. Kim and Kat. Yeah, Kim and Kat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pebbles Infinity, Fosto Pebbles himself. Yes, sir. How you doing? Pretty good. How is it? How's it going, guys? I've been gone for way too long. Way too long. But I've been very busy. You, you have. Uh, we are sitting inside the uh, brand new studio. Uh, if you guys have been, uh, if you watch Fosto, go check him out. He's he's really fun. You're gonna you can see year one uh, years. One through episodes one through two two hundred yeah yeah the first two hundred are the fossil pebble journey and now we are on the next chapter pebbles infinity, pebbles infinity. that is that is an insane uh, name man like where where what was the idea behind the rebrand and and the comeback I know you uh, you've been away for a while some big things yeah. happened in your life yes sir uh, what was the whole inspiration behind the rebrand well when I left in twenty nineteen. I never expected to be on so long. I was like, okay, I need to leave for a bit, lose some weight, and come back. So I went on a maybe five-month journey to lose some weight. Originally, I lost 40 pounds that first run. Wow. And the reason I wanted to lose the weight is because back in the day, I was more like a theme park guy. Right. I remember. We used, yeah. to, go to, we used to hit up Disneyland all the time together. Hell yeah. And you can't be a theme park guy and not fit on the rides. Yeah. That just doesn't make sense. I feel that. So my journey was, all right, I'm going to lose weight. I'll be back. Five, six months tops. Right. Then COVID happened. The world shut down. The world changed completely. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, fuck, <laughs> what do I do now? So without like the gyms being open... I gained the weight back. Right. The 40 pounds were, were done for nothing. So I was, my original weight was 315. Okay. I went to 315 pounds. And once the gym started opening, uh, I got this house. I got married. Yeah. And I was like, well, my attention is now over here for a little bit. Right. Once we've settled down, we got the house how we want it. I'm like, okay, I need to come back. I need to lose weight again. I cannot come back and be the same. That would be pointless. Right. <clears throat> so I ended up uh, losing weight again, and I've lost a total of 70 pounds. Dude, congratulations. Thank I you. mean, I feel like I, I, within the four years that we haven't seen each other, you know, I mean, we all kind of went on a weight loss journey, I think. like Yeah, Sam, I know, lost Sammy, like 100 plus pounds. Yeah, right? Sammy lost 100 pounds. Um, and he, he recently got the surgery and he, he looks oh. fucking amazing, you know, and he's, yeah. and I'm so proud of that guy, dude. He, he's, he's kept on it. He's still keeping on it. He, he does his, he does his, his runs, his and runs. he does, he's got the bike at home. So if like he wants to be indoors, grilling chicken, and I'm yeah, like, good food for prep, you. Dude. Like he's, 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 killing. he went to another level that I will not commit. Oh, I know. I just, I like, to be that. honest, I'm like, I'll have my soda every now and then. Yeah. I, we had tacos early. Like, yeah, I will still eat. Yeah. You gotta, but you now it's food. limited. Yeah. Right. It's like you have your cheat day once in, you know, a couple of days here and there. He, it was, it was incredibly hard because, you know, he was down for haunt season and yeah. we, 
we, you know, after, after haunt, usually like we'd get done like one, two in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, we'd be hungry. Yeah. And th the sucky part is there's not much open at it's like one food. to two in the morning, especially like on Thursday nights or Sunday nights. And mm -hmm. then we would go on those days and it'd be like, it'd be bullshit. And like, he's only limited to eating such certain things like grilled chicken, only that. So like every way I wanted to go, it was like, he couldn't get something or like he had to get something specialized or something like it, it just it like was, a it, veggie burger or something. Okay. No, like no, he like, just he was just trying to go for grilled chicken, and I was like, you know, I wasn't oh. mad or anything about it because I was like, I understand the guy. You know, he's 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 got to eat the way he's got to eat. You know, yeah. and, you know, it's that's what's that's what the doctors were crying of him right now. It was just frustrating because like you, when you get hungry, you're hungry, and you just want yeah, I just want a quick yeah easy something out, food, but then, no, yeah, it's just so. But so what no, you guys end up having? I don't think I think one night we tried to make a mission to Taco Bell, and we when we got to the one we thought was open. It like was closed already, and I was pissed, and it was all right though. We, I ended up, I think, I think one night we did Jack in the Box, um, and I can't remember. I think he, I think one night, one day we went to Tacos Galvan, and we ended up uh, like buy, he ended up buying some like grilled tri uh, grilled chicken for like later. Oh, okay. so he like saved it and stuff. Oh, he food but, prepped it. <laughs> yeah, so like that was that was smart of him to do that. But yeah, it's been you know. It's been a journey for him, and he's been he's been really keeping on it. That's for, good because if that was me, I'd been like, "Hell yeah, let's go, let's eat, like yeah, let's no. do it." Korean barbecue, hell yeah, let's go. I will never turn that down. Like yeah, like as far as me, I just I I I wasn't even trying. Oh really? Like I I I, and I hate to say this, I don't I don't mean to be that person or anything, but ever since I got COVID, okay. oh you had it? I I I've had it like three times. Oh. Shit. From the time even before there was a vaccine to like even after the vaccine, like twice after, I've had it like three times. Damn, it's not fun. No, but um, at least it got easier every time that came though, because my body was kind of already used to it. So it was like okay, like the first time was just killer. But yeah, I I I remember after that, after I got COVID, I ended up like an appetite change happened. Uh, Where it was okay. like, I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't as hungry as I used to. Like I used to only eat like a few bites of something and I'd be full. And that wasn't like me. Cause I used to like eat like a ton. Mm -hmm. And so like I would eat like a few bites of something and then just be full and I couldn't finish it. And that went on for like at least two or three years. Oh, wow. So my, my eating portions became very limited. And so what ended up happening was I started eating more and like today I can eat a little bit more than I'm capable of eating but uh it's sometimes it becomes like i'll only eat like one whole meal a day like i won't eat two or three oh. or won't munch or anything like that's all i'll eat and i'll just be full for the whole day like it depends it varies on the day i don't know if i never got tested for covid but i do feel like i got something at one point but uh my appetite has also not been the same and i and i could relate to that where sometimes like the tacos de gavilan was my only thing I've ate today. Right. And it's late as hell. Like, yeah. That's not normal. That's not okay. But it's like, okay, but I wasn't hungry the rest of the day. Hey, bro, it's, it's, no, it is. If you're a Mexican, it's, it's a completely normal. Mom didn't make dinner until like nine o'clock at night. My mom was the opposite, to be honest. She did my, early. She did early. Our dinner was at 3 p.m. I've, I've, I've met you either, you either have the Mexican families who do it very early like that. My mm -hmm. grandpa was like that. He would do it at like three, four o'clock. Uh, or then you have the ones that like just do it at late at night, like eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. You know? When my friends tell me that, I'm like, that's weird. Yeah, that's I, not what I, I'm used to. I, I was I was always kind of raised in the household of like five, six o'clock was always dinner. That was where I was raised. Three or four was for me. Like three or grandpa, four. Yeah. Right now. It's and like then, right when you came home, it was already ready. <laughs> <laughs> like I called my parents for Thanksgiving and it was like around two and they're like, oh yeah, we're about to eat. <laughs> like so. she'd been up since like five in the morning cooking <laughs> everything and stuff i doubt it they're not a big family it's just three of them over there okay so yeah something small yeah a little small turkey yeah small ham mm -hmm. and little fun stuff um talk to me about this room dude uh it it is beautiful it is gorgeous i mean Thank before you. we went on the air we did a whole tour of it you know you were showing me everything i mean it, it is a it, you know a lot of people that I've had on, the, on my show that come mm -hmm. in studio have said like, this is like a live comic book store and your freaking thing. It's like a museum in here. And then I look at your setup and I'm like, this is way more organized. This is way more cleaner than mine. I'm jealous of it. <laughs> I mean, you, you got, you. you got, you got custom made rigs that you built up here. You got equipment yeah. hanging. What you can't see on camera. 
Um, you got the microphone set up. You got the monitor set up right in front of us. Um, you have your command center over here, the GoPro for right there. I mean, I mean, this this thing is incredible, dude. Like, what was what was the inspiration behind this, man? I've always been metic met meticulous. I've always been like, this needs to be here. I need this here. And I won't think about it. I right. won't think about it. I need this here. Where is it? Okay, it's always going to be here. This is and so this room, like I said earlier with you, it's gone through like four to five different versions of it. Where I would legit, not to sound like I make money or anything, but like I would buy some tables and then be like, no, this doesn't work. And just toss them out. Wow. It was bad <laughs> trying to figure out what worked for me damn how many how many trial how much trial and error did you have to go through in here to like finally finalize what you? well needed? when i first started and you could kind of see it at the end of like my last video i did four years ago right where i have like a angle table and it was really big and i had maybe one one light rig and a camera right and was very little in the back. And to me, the background was always missing in my room. Right. Because when I was younger, my mom always like, don't have shit in your room. We need to maintain it clean. My mom was very clean. She liked the white walls. She, her floor was white. And she always wanted everything clean. So she didn't allow me to have stuff. Right. Originally, what I used to collect was Blu-rays and DVDs because that's what my dad collected. Right. Eventually, I ended up selling out, and that's how I have that Funko shelf over there. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I forgot where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I totally blanked out. Holy shit. Uh, we were talking about uh, your mom, how she didn't like you to have stuff on the walls, the inspiration behind the... Studio. Oh, okay, okay. So I started... When I started YouTube... I was always like, okay, what am I going to do? Originally, I was, my idea was to go with vlogs. Right. And I'm like, okay, I can't do this daily. What, what's something I could do daily? And I'm like, okay, well, there was a YouTube phase where everything was challenges. So I'm like, oh, maybe I could do some challenges. That was always hard to get people together. I mean. Location. Let's, let's be honest, though. If we're going back a little bit, to, it's a Fostel channel right here. Still, the only person on YouTube that I know has the greatest POV of Jurassic World the ride. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, you I sat, not, not a normal brag, but yes, of course. You like. sat in every row, you sat in every perspective. Yeah. You broke down that ride, bro. You were just like, I'm going to tell you what the best pers perspective to sit at, how you can get the best pr experience with this ride. And I would love best. to continue doing that. Dude, I down the love. Line. I mean, dude, Mario Kart. That's what you got to do with next or, or something. It's going to be hard with the AR. Yeah, that's true. That's that's the only downfall of that. I don't think there but, really is a bad seat for Mario Kart because it's like a four seater. I've never been. I, I was. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I've just. I've tried to I've avoid seen. spoilers about it, but I've heard like it's somewhat disappointing because it's kind of slow. But I, mean, I just it's Mario I just, Kart. I really hope I fit on it because if I don't, I'm gonna walk See, out very depressed because I'm gonna be like, I've been wanting to do this since I was five, and you just <laughs> took that away from me. That's that's where the weight loss came in for me. I was like, okay, I can't. It ain't even a weight Not thing being, for me. It's just me being fucking tall. tall. You're right. Like, I was happy to find out, like, last Halloween Horror Nights, not this past one I came, but, like, this last one in 2022, I was happy to find out that I can fit on Forbidden Journey again. For a while, I couldn't because I was actually too big. Like, side Which one's Forbidden Journey? That's the one where you're, like, you're on the, like, you're supposed to be on, like, a, it's like a four-person seater, and it's like a... It lifts you up, and it's like the screens, but it moves you around, and it takes you throughout. Like, you're playing Quidditch with Harry, and then you go through the Forbidden Forest. Oh, okay, yeah. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Forest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally blanked on. <laughs> so, yeah. That one, I... That was one of the rides that made me wake up. Yeah. Where I used to fit in this. That was Why me, too. Is your, I don't know. I can't speak for off view, but it's always that denial. Yeah. There's always a denial. Yeah. Where it's like, nah, this this still fits. It's it's a little tight, but it still fits. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's when that's when it hit me. Like right. oh. 
I am. The scale isn't lying. <laughs> <laughs> the scale isn't off as I keep thinking. Like, it, it, I need to wake up. It was it was something for me, too, because I, I remember going the the opening summer Harry Potter Land open. I remember my mom asking me what I wanted for my birthday. And I told her I want to go with I want to go to Universal with two of my friends. So uh, we, we got the tickets. Uh, she dropped me and my two friends off. Um, and I remember we got on Forbidden Journey like five times that day, bro. Like we, cause we got there like right at rope drop. So like we, we hit it like two or three times cause there was like no line. And then like later on in the day when it got less crowded, like we hit it two more times before we left and we hit it like five times that day, dude. That's what's up. I come back like a year later. Right. And I try to get back on it and I don't fit on it cause mm-hmm. they, they have a, a strict like two or three click thing. Yes. Where, like, if it doesn't hit a certain amount And it needs to be, like, that green light off to the corner. Yeah. And it's, like, I'm glad now that they have the test seat in the front. Yeah. So I don't have to walk all the way to the damn ride just to get kicked off because I don't fucking fit. But uh, last Halloween Horror Nights, because I I had realized that I was losing all this weight and stuff, I'm like, oh, I want to see if, like, you know, I could fit on this ride again. Um, And, mind you, my girlfriend, she gets really, like, nauseous and stuff, so she won't get on the ride with me, but she's more than willing to walk the line with me. Okay. Just so we can kind of... Do that side exit? Well, yeah, because she loves Harry Potter regardless. She wishes she can, you know, do that, but she gets a little motion sickness and stuff, so I'm like, all right, like, if you want, just let's let's walk together to the ride then, and we can look at the Hogwarts stuff and everything. Um, And... So I get on it and I just get so excited, dude, because I'm like, I, I haven't fit on this ride in years. But like, here's the problem with that ride. As much as I love it, there's like one scene that kills me so much. And that's the, spiders. the giant spiders. Yep. I, I, <laughs> that's I, why earlier when I'm like, oh, shit, there's a spider behind me. <laughs> I, 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 I always know when it's going to happen, the scene. So immediately when it happens, I just shut my eyes and I can hear the audio and I know the cues to know oh, when yeah. it's going to finish to go to the tree section. So I'm just like, okay, because like already enough. That's a good study though to fucking. I know. I, I, I like studied the hell out of the audio. I'm just like, okay, it's around here. We're good. But then I always get like a peek like real quick of like the last spider, but it's like not too much. But I, I, I'm just terrified, bro. Like spiders fucking, ugh, God, it's just terrifying. I hate it. I'm okay with them. They're like, whatever. I, I won't, I won't touch them though, but. I hated walking through, um creep show one year that in 20, 2019 yeah well it was a cockroach room no yeah but still yeah. it was just ugh. yeah I mean. <laughs> and i lucked out every single time because there was an effect with a character that was waving a feather by people in like the dark room i remember that yeah and i, and I lucked out every single time i went through that i dodged that every time and i like because i know if i would have felt it i would have freaked out Fucking run <laughs> yeah so it, it it's like i don't know man i'm this weight loss thing like I, a lot of people tell me that I, I look like i'm slimming down and stuff all that stuff you know and i'm just like i'm not really trying to but it's happening and i'm not complaining about it i don't know if it's that long that i haven't seen you but i don't remember you being fat i don't i i was just i i, I think i was because i'm tall it kind of blends in uh okay yeah, yeah but yeah. i think at my highest i was like 320 now i'm at oh. like 280 something oh okay. so i've lost like a good 40 pounds i think yeah but it's been it's been a journey. It's been fun. I've had a good time. Is it just not eating, or do you work out, or just? Well, I mean, I'm very physical at my at my job too. So like, gotcha. kind of going, you know, walking every night, doing my run, all that stuff. And then you know, when haunt season comes around, oh, you're walking for days, dude. We're just, for like- yeah, we're walking over all the scare zone, like especially because we were at knots more than anything this year. Mm-hmm. And so we're just going to scare zone to scare zone, just checking out everybody and going through a maze here and there. Yeah. But it's been, it's been fun. I mean, I mean, we, we've, we've been having a good time and Sammy came down for horn nights. He came down for horn nights and knots this year. Um, but he got the surgery in between the two. So he couldn't make it to opening night, but he still got to experience the event, which I'm glad he got to enjoy it at least. So I like that little Bray Wyatt and, uh, like trivia that, you guys did in the beginning. That was yeah. fun. I, uh, we, that's, that's where I did mine too. When we, I came back. Yeah. I, I, I watched that video, dude. I was like, I was loving it. Yeah. I'm like, that's so while I'm working in this room, it, it was a constant battle in my head. When do I come back? When should I come back? And the months of August hit hard, like a little bit personally. Right. Because, uh, my aunt, a week or Three weeks prior to Bray Wyatt dying, passed away. Damn. She was in the older side, not too old, like 67, 68, somewhere around there. 
and the the day Bray Wyatt died, then it was her viewing the next day mm-hmm. and her funeral the following day. Wow. Then that Sunday, it, I just reflected like, damn, Bray Wyatt was 36. I am seven years away from that. <laughs> I go, if I die at 36, without coming back, what was the point of any of this? Right. I go, if I die and no one got to experience this room, I don't get to make another YouTube video, which I was very passionate about. What was the point of any of it? The weight loss, the room, the house. You just, you leave it in the will that Knights of Horror can come. <laughs> and, and you, you, know, you got to fight a bunch of people. Listen, I will, pay, I will, I will pay your wife rent. <laughs> I will pay her a good, like, uh, half of what she has to pay for the house so then you know it evens out that way she's you know at least she's covered on that end just to have this space i'll let her know i'll let her know that's the only cash offer we've had so that's a pretty good one to my end I'll, 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 I, if, if that's what it takes to have the space i'll be like babe I, I did i did i did something and i think you're gonna need to help me every month but you know we're not losing this space no nah, it's it's wonderful no nah, that's good man i mean i i'm glad you're back it was cool to see uh the video uh, and we were talking about this before the, the show, too, but I, I thought it was funny that in the video that you mentioned this this room uh, and, and you did a really good job explaining it because, like, <laughs> you know, you, you said it one way, but then now seeing it in person, it's like, oh, wow. Like, oh, he wasn't being snobby. <laughs> I was like, no, like, but I, in my head, I'm just like, this is like, uh, I mean, you explained it and I was just like, oh, wow, that sounds pretty cool. But like seeing it in person, I'm just like, holy this fuck. This isn't what people expect. like. I Yeah, like everyone I explained to. Like, oh, cool, you're going to do podcasts. Oh, you, yeah, you did YouTube. I remember that. But yeah. then, like, when they say, like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, yeah, it, this is a game changer, in my opinion. I mean, I love, like, the theming of everything. You got, you got, the, you got the theme chairs. You got, the, you got the Iron Man. You got the Captain America. You got uh, Black Panther. Do you have mm-hmm. one custom for you? No, no, no. Because right you could barely see that area. <laughs> The man but, in the chair who gives a shit. I know. <laughs> hey, man, listen. Back in the day in 2019 when we did those those live streams, man, you were, the, you were the guy in the chair. You were the guy in the chair, and you made us look good. You made us sound good. We didn't have the roadcaster then. You brought that over. You That's right. Hold sound shit. effects. Like, you did a whole thing for us for the Krampus live stream. Like, it was it was lit, bro. I, I, I dude, that's why when you asked, like, let's do a podcast, I'm like, let's fucking do a podcast. <laughs> it's been way too long. It has been way too long. Because I forgot the was was Disneyland the last time I saw you or was it the Metallica tribute or the Ozzy Osbourne tribute? No, I feel like I seen you somewhere else. No, like within the last year or two, I could have sworn like I saw you. Because the only other thing I remember is the Ozzy Osbourne of the Swami. How long ago was that? That that's why I don't remember. But other than that, I can't. I felt like like I I thought for sure like I ran into you somewhere. And, like, you came and, like, said hi real quick. I hadn't seen you in a while. And, like, it was, like. I ran into you at the Swami, for sure. You can go to any haunts this year? No, I haven't been to a haunt since 2018. Damn. How do you do that? Well, you're you're really the one that introduced me to horror. <laughs> you're the reason I have a little horror section, to be honest. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to get you a Knights of Horror uh, sign in here you can put that oh yeah I, I will I'll, i got room up there especially the new logo have you seen that you, you seen that new logo, that wolf right, right? yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Like, death metal logo i think it feel good in here yeah i'll get you something maybe. it'll work <laughs> but I, I i i i in that video you said you didn't have anything dc related in this thing and i'm actually doing a, a thorough <laughs> glance around everything you weren't lying no so i i went ahead this morning after watching that video and bought you a uh batman logo sign um, it's, it's the Matt Reeves. It says the Batman with the logo in the back. It's the red with the black. And I was like looking at spaces. There's like a spot on that wall right there, or like over there or behind me or however you want to do it. But yeah, I'm like, you, you can't go. <laughs> you have to have at least one thing. One thing. Seeing. And if it's going to be anything, it's going to be Batman. Of course. That so, is to go to Batman. Everyone, Batman. everyone else in DC's eye, in my opinion. That James Gunn uh, taking over though now. The Suicide Squad was a badass. Oh, he's just, he's in charge of all of it now. You know that, right? Yeah, but making a movie every year is different to making a whole universe 
with multiple because then he says the animated movies are connected the video games are going to be connected I'm the excited. movie that's more than what marvel's doing and yeah, marvel is not even getting their shit together right now i feel like this is where this is where i'm seating with marvel right now i feel like phase what are we on four five, five we're on five we just began with oh, ant-man god this phase is going this by. Phase one? shit's going by the too marvels fast. oh the marvels i didn't see it i haven't seen it uh, the day I was gonna go see it, my son was born. Hey, yeah, that's that's a great excuse to get out of it. <laughs> um, no, it, I'll say this about the Marvels: the villain was very kind of like it's it's a villain you're not gonna like remember in Marvel history. Like, oh, dude, like you remember this villain in this movie? Like, it's not gonna be like one of those. To be fair, it. they haven't done that in a while. Like half of I, two to three were. I will say this: what saved me for Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania was Kang. I thought his Kang's, performance was amazing. He saved that whole movie. The ending sucked. Yeah. But it made you think. Is he still alive? Did they get rid of him? Even Ant Man yeah. questions the same thing. He questioned it, but then, like, ah, whatever. Fuck. <laughs> He's definitely not in the same universe. Yeah. He's definitely not. I, I would say so far, things that I've liked post Endgame the Loki series. Loki was good. Season one and two. I loved season two. That was such a good. You know, uh, fucking, it was such a good show. Yeah. Um, WandaVision was really good. I really liked WandaVision. The ending was kind of disappointing. The first three quarters of it. The ending. Yeah. Like, Andy was kind of like let down because I was just expecting, uh, fucking. Like, uh, even the explanation, like, oh, you, this, the TVs was your connection to your chat. Like, ah. Yeah. I mean, that's a stretch, yeah. but okay. You know, there's Knight. war outside. Moon, Moon Knight, Knight was war. fantastic. The only thing I didn't like was the ending, too. With John Lockie? Yeah, I feel like... I'm excited. To then. save the budget, they cut him off to the third third well, version. and Well, now they're going to make it season two, so then we'll see probably more of him. Yeah, but, I mean, they should have shown it, something. Yeah, I mean, do you know anything about the character? No. He is, like, probably the worst out of all the personalities. Like, Well, know, after like, the fucking... <laughs> like, he is just a psychopath. What I also hated about Moon Knight is that they didn't connect. Like, was that you? No. And then just brushed it off. That's the... That the was third the set, person, that yeah, was yeah. Like the setting up the whole kind of seeds of that. But, but they did that, like, in, like, two to three episodes. Yeah. And it's like, okay, how are you not getting... There's another person in you. But okay, I, I, I guess. I really liked What If. I thought What If was fantastic. Some episodes were great. I Other just, episodes I, were like, eh, whatever. It, it made me kind of like, and that's the whole point of What If. It made you want more, but you're never going to get more. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. what a What If is. It's like, what if this happened instead of this, you know? And I was always a fan of the What If comics back in the day. They were just something like, as a reader, just reading this, you're like, yeah, what if this happened? Like, this would be fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then now seeing like an animated spin on like the MCU version of like, this is the What If, but MCU version, you know? And, mm -hmm. you know, with everything popping off, season two going to be dropping in December. I'm super stoked for Episode that. Episode for like, what, 10 days or something? Dude, my, my buddy, when he went to July Comic-Con, he already saw the first two episodes. They, they the screened fuck? him at Comic-Con, and he said they're, oh, they, wow. they, were, they were fantastic. So, um, oh, damn. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of where this all goes now. I mean, I know there's uh, the next major like Marvel movie is going to be Deadpool three. That's the only movie the only out yep. next year. Um, but I feel I, like it's going to be such a big movie that it deserves its only. I feel like that movie alone. And I, and I haven't stated this out public cause I've been wanting to, but I feel like that movie alone is going to save Marvel. <sighs> because that right there, Ryan Reynolds has full control of as well. Because him and Hugh Jackman are executive producers, so they get to tell it how they want to tell it. And Ryan Reynolds is very good at doing a comic accurate Deadpool. That's why he's the only one that can play that role. Yeah. He he even got Hugh Jackman to come out of retirement. How many people can, say crazy, that yeah. can do that? You know what I mean? And then, you know, you're hearing a lot of rumors, man. Like, you're hearing the original X-Men are going to come back. You know, you're hearing Fazbender might come back. You're hearing, you know, the original Magneto, Patrick Stewart coming back. You're hearing about... Uh, well, like Patrick these, Stewart already came back, and yeah, what now, a and, and Doctor Strange. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think that right there. When you see him, it's like hell yeah. But then when he yeah. dies, the way he dies is like yeah, it was kind of bro. I think it was kind of dirty how they did that scene. 
Um, Very. But it's, got, it has a shocking factor for a second. I kind of I kind of like to give that movie a little bit of a break though because Sam Raimi came in kind of late into the project whereas mm-hmm. like the original director kind of came in and Dude, it's been so long. I remember we brought it up in a, like an episode or podcast. Yeah, dude. We're like it's going to be a horror movie. How insane is that? Oh, fuck. That's a long time. It had its moments, but it was like, yeah. Yeah, I would never call that a horror movie. I was like, this is like a teen horror movie, maybe. You know, like, sure. <laughs> I was like, this is some shit you see on Freeform. Very low fucking, like, was um, it like, are you afraid of the dark? Or Yeah. I, I think there was a lot of hype built around. Like, I think that a lot of people were going to see more things with the multiverse. Like, you were going to see. I think they I saw, see, like, a lot of people go crazy. Like, oh, these two sharded gas. It looks like yeah. Deadpool's eyes. And, like, yeah, I sure. Think, I think a lot of people were just expecting cameo after cameo after cameo because it was a multiverse movie. Um, what I I I don't care about the cameos. I don't care, but I wanted him to travel more. Yeah, into the multiverse, and the fact that he only stayed in that one dimension the whole time. I'm like, oh, to see a few, I guess a few different versions of him though was pretty cool. But it's the same fucking Benedict Cumberbatch. I know, but like to see him in the beginning where he was kind of like I, I don't know if he was like a was, supreme or something. Like yeah, but associate. he was speaking he was speaking a different language and shit. He had like kind of like it kind of looked. Oh like no, a, he was speaking Spanish. I think was he because because like American had, Chavez was. Spanish. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, but he had kind of like a Japanese culture thing going on with that with that with costume, the ponytail, the ponytail, and shit, yeah. the costume, and everything, which I thought that was cool. And then to see the the evil version of him, but I kind of like to think that was the what if version of him. Well, what if is essentially like a branch in the multiverse, and it's just right. a different person of the multiverse. What I really <laughs> get annoyed with was the uh, musical note fight. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. the. He but had choices. <laughs> they just confirmed, uh, I, I, and that's I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't seen that in the collection here. You don't have that one yet, but they just released that book on the MCU that really, that talks about the entire oh history. the timeline. And they shit, finally yeah. broke down every script. Every, so to be fair, there like, are really no books except for the Dark Hold. You have the fucking Dark Hold. Yeah. It's on oh, the- oh yeah, you used it in your video. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> the Stark glasses. I have the Awesome Mix volume. I'm gonna steal volume two. For which one? For the awesome mix. I have volume one. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna steal volume two. <laughs> Is this when you thought there wasn't more to see, and I, I looked down. No, yeah, uh, I have friends that come over, and it's like their fifth time. They're like, "Dude, I just noticed this." I go, "Yeah, yeah." You're, I, I feel like it's gonna take me a while until I'm gonna like it, the next time I come over, I'm gonna see something I didn't see. Like eventually, I'm not gonna do it right away, just so I could tease people with it. But I'm gonna eventually do a room tour. Oh hell yeah, dude! I you know I'll watch that like five times, <laughs> and you still miss it when you're. Here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm be like, hey, I saw that on the room tour. What you where's that thing over there? Right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's 3D been... mapping. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I uh, yeah, Marvel's been kind of everywhere right now. We'll see what happens in the future of it. I I have high hopes. They said the next movies that actually count are Deadpool three towards Secret Wars at least. Deadpool yeah. three, Spider Man four. Fantastic Four, and there was one more. It's another big player. Uh, Captain America, I think. Uh, I don't know. I heard. Or the Thunderbolts. No, the Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts. I heard Captain America fucking tanked already with the test reviews. Yeah, dude, that's that's fucking, not a good sign. Dude, that's not a good sign at all. Fucking Especially Seth Rollins in it. Seth Rollins. I know, dude. He's. I think he. I think he's part of the uh, the Serpent I just, Society. I think something. it's just gonna be like a three minute cameo. Oh. I if he, they, they don't cut it out because I heard they're going back to do six months of reshoots now. Now that they have a time extended. And that's what scared me. I'm like, that's going to suck if Seth Well, Collins- Deadpool scared me for a while when the writer strike was going on. Where, like, yeah. Ryan Reynolds wasn't allowed to improvise. I'm like, ah, uh, you're going to suck. Yeah. So I'm glad they got that settled finally, too. And they're back. They're they're back in production on that. So yeah. Like earlier this week, I think. Right. Yeah. You've seen, you've seen the set photos for that, right? The 20th Century Fox logo and shit. Oh uh, yeah, like it's all like it's an all like apocalyptic. Kind of, it, it looks kind of like Loki, the, 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 the like that, that place where the, where the, uh, he who remains was that the kind of the edit. Oh, universe. I didn't see that part. Well, that's the kind of the junkyard. I, I just it looks kind of like the Fox label like dropped and then yeah, it looks like a junkyard scene. And I think yeah. I think it's supposed to be obviously because it it doesn't have like the final you know you didn't CGI. put the yeah the CGI the the filters and all that. But mm. I wonder if it's going to be similar to where He Who Remains was that that place where Loki was, where like they just dump all the like, the shit of the multiverse, and that's like the Fox universe just crashing. Just dumps them. <laughs> yeah, because they like Disney owns Fox and shit now. So like 20th Century. Fox I hope he doesn't gone. do like a She Hulk ending. What do you think of She Hulk? <sighs> garbage. I hot garbage. 
I I found some enjoyment of it. I thought the Kevin robot was stupid. I laughed at it. I found it funny. I was like, I did too, because I know who they were referencing. They're of trying course, to reference Feige. Ke- Fe- Kevin Feige, and that's part of the whatchamacallit box this month. The for the you still collect those? The Amazon Funko. Yeah, box? so it's coming in Monday. That's one. Of, like, that's one of the pops, I think. The Shio? The, the, the Kevin? Ro- the robot. Kevin. Oh my god. I think it was that one, or it was some robot. I don't remember what it was, but I think it was Kevin. Oh, okay. that was one. I think there was like another cool one too. Um, but yeah, it's it, when I saw that, I was like. So, Kevin <laughs> Feige's a robot. Like, why? What is That's happening? That's an interesting choice. So uh, an you, old cameo would have been better. So, you you jumped out of your Disney Plus screen to... What? <laughs> <laughs> to visit the studio and it's Kevin Feige the robot? They, they filmed that straight. Dude, they filmed it all that in Los Angeles, too. That was at the Disney, oh, of course. The Disney studio. That's right there. the actual yeah. studio. Yeah. Like, I've out. seen that entrance before. I'm like... Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Interesting. Dude, I, I I will say this, though. I did love the return of Charlie Cox. Of course. He did a good job. Um, I can't wait for Echo for that reason. I heard bad reviews on that, too. I haven't heard that. Uh, I heard that a lot of people are kind of like, some people got some test screenings of it, and it's just like, I wasn't expecting much from it. I mean, she's not really too well, no. well known, but they're the <laughs> kingpin. Vincent like that's where the D'Onofrio. Hawkeye series fumbled for me. Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> yeah, I like, thought we were going to see Spider Man at the end. That'd have been cool. <laughs> that that should have been, especially how it was so close to the release. Well, it was so. It was not even that. It was like where Spider Man Plaza everything where Spider Man yeah. ended it is around with the time Hawkeye happened. So it's like, what the fuck, Marvel. Did you Assholes. play that new Spider-Man game? I did. I beat it. I beat the main story. Uh, I have to do all the side shit still, though. Oh, okay. That did. The main story was good, though. I think, for, for at least for me, I will say this was better than the first one. Uh-huh. I think so. From what I've seen so far, uh huh. it's fucking incredible. I mean, you got to play as both Miles and Spider-Man and Venom. That I lost my shit. My wife's told me, I've never heard you happier. <laughs> I go because I didn't expect this. I wanted it. I did not expect it, dude. It, it, I was so happy. It was. I, I thought at, at first. I thought that it was definitely an interesting choice to make Harry Osborn Venom. Yeah, for the story. But I do like the quote unquote like direction they're going. You know, they're kind of their own multiverse. They're kind of doing their own story. That you know, it's the basics where they're going. I feel like. Harry's gonna be the Green Goblin too. Yes, and it's like for Spider Man. Oh, 3. he's Venom and the Green Goblin. Sure, I guess. Well, they quote unquote like destroyed Venom, essentially. But they're already saying like, oh, if you guys want a Venom game, we'll give it to you. I could see plus that. the oh but, uh, I okay yeah well Cletus Cassidy okay you know about it. yeah okay I, I saw that I I didn't I didn't I accidentally saw that it was on YouTube and they're like oh Carnage is in <laughs> Spider Man two I'm like God. Damn it! <laughs> Why? Fucking! I wanted to find a Cletus Cassidy. Yeah. It's dude. The, it's for the Black Cat missions, right? You have to like. Uh, Not Black Cat. It's or the, the the fire the fire missions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You got to complete. All it's those. like the leader, or whatever. And call. then I know if you can if you complete all the drones around the city, that's that's what the tie in for across the Spider Verse is. The little. Uh, yeah, the little yeah, bots, yeah. The, the bots. bots. You kind of. It's not a real tie in because they cut the scene off from the movie. Apparently. What do you mean? Oh, that was supposed to be in the movie, and that's how... Do you, Have you seen the bot thing, or no? Yeah, it was like, she's in a portal. A bartender, right? Yeah, she's the bartender, and then she talks about... Uh, she was supposed to be in Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, that scene was supposed to be in there? No, no, no. Oh, she the, she, she her, was. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, bartending to different Spider-Mans. Mm. So it being cut out. And like, they cut her out completely? Yeah. Yeah, she was never in the movie. So why is she in the... Does anybody know who she is? It had to be... You, I literally went online to be like, who the fuck is this? And I saw like, oh, it's the deleted scene they never put in the movie, but she was supposed to be in it. She's a spider person, or is she a is she just like a, a bartender at the like a detective or something? No, no, just a bartender. Because she knows uh, what's his name, um, Miguel O'Hara. Because she's yeah, like, yeah, Miguel's because, gonna be pissed. <laughs> because she bartends at the Spider Verse, mm. so she bartends all the Spider Man. Oh, where yeah, because they had a they had like a like and a the facility, cafeteria. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Or they they all met up and shit. So she was just going to be a bartender talking to Spider-Man's or whatever. That's interesting. And so 
when she appears, dude, I was so hyped for that uh, side mission. I was like, oh, I got to get them all. I got to get them all. Yeah. Then when I got them all and we did that, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I go, this is bullshit. It kind of made sense, though, because it kind of, I mean, that I'm glad they did that. And they're kind of, this is, if you kind of think about it, Marvel's kind of already setting the seeds of just doing what DC's already trying to do. Because we found out from across the Spider-Verse that ties into the MCU. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, the, Sony, the Sony universe has officially bled into the MCU, especially with No Way Home. Yeah, of course. It bled it even more with Across the Spider-Verse. Um, and yeah, now Sony's it, been butchering their own fucking films. They have. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I think it's ridiculous when you have, like, how do I put this? When you do a a Spider-Man villain movie, but without Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't think it works. Morbius was fun, but it was a very shitty story. I never bothered watching it. I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time with it. I'm not a fan of Jared Leto, one bit. <laughs> but I will say this. What do you mean? He had the best Joker. <laughs> Joker. I hate that Joker. I hate that Joker so much, dude. That Joker sucks. No, yeah. I like but I'm not a fan of Jared Leto, but I actually think if given the right script and given the right director and a solid story with a Spider-Man, mm-hmm. his Morbius will be fun. It'll be good. It'll be acceptable. Did you see the new Hunter Mansion movie? I did. It threw me off knowing that he was a Phantom. Yeah. Like, no, that's not Jared Leto. What do you mean? It was just mostly his voice, but yeah, it was, it was just... He did a good job, but at the same time, I'm just like, I still don't like you. <laughs> just don't. It was a fun movie for me. I, I no, it was it. a very fun movie. I, I what I really liked in the Haunted Mansion is they 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 gapped the two attractions, Florida's. And yeah, yeah. I, I was like, oh, let's go to the other one. I'm like, wait a minute. And then fucking Winona Ryder's the fucking uh, the tour guide. I'm like, that's great. Dude. That's fucking yeah. They knew how to blend everything. That in. was a good gap. And then if you if you paid attention inside the like the Florida version when he goes when they go visit. You see, like the the chain link is the same one that they use that like, the bats oh, wow. and stuff. Like they they really got a lot of details correct. Yeah, I loved. I I think that movie, dare I say, was better than the Eddie Murphy one. But the Eddie that, Murphy that one was was a lot of fun to watch. Like I always have fun watching. It. I haven't watched this since I was a kid. But even as a kid, I was like this is a little wacky. It, it has some moments that are actually creepy. I will say that. Oh, okay, but. I like Eddie Murphy, so he makes it kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's, I mean, that's the one that I grew up with. But uh, this new one was really good. I think they did a better job kind of paying more nods to the ride. Especially I think it did a better job than Pirates of the Caribbean. At that point, I mean, if you watch the first two Pirates movies, maybe first three. First three are fantastic. Me and my wife recently rewatched them. Well, like, those ones were specifically supposed to be meant to tribute to the ride. You know, you saw a lot of the scenes from the ride in, like, the first couple of movies that they'd done. Uh, the, I, I remember there's even one scene where they're trans, they're, I think they're transporting over to uh, uh, Davy Jones's locker uh-huh. to get Jack out. And within that, like, little black cut of, like, it just being pitch black, um, you hear the song from the ride, yo, ho, yo. And it's, like, the exact same ride audio and everything. So I'm like, you know, little things like that and everything. I, I think when you have someone like, the status of Johnny Depp, mm-hmm. it's just mainly to sell tickets because they know he is a big box office attraction. He's got a huge well, everyone, fan base. Not back then. I don't think he was Even that back bi- then. No, he, he started being established like in the 80s, 90s, bro. You remember he was on 21 Jump Street in the 80s and that's where he really took off. And then, yeah, and he, then he did a lot of Freddy acting. Freddy Krueger, right? Yeah, he was in Nightmare on Elm Street. That was his first movie. Um but what really I think took him off was when he did movies like Sweeney Todd, Sweeney Todd, uh, Edward Scissorhands. You know, he did all these movies with Tim Burton, mm-hmm. and then you know he started doing a lot of serious roles too. And then by the time he got to Pirates, he was already a well-known actor. Like they because I was. never heard of Johnny Depp until Pirates. I would say Pirates single-handedly elevated, elevated his career to fandom. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's where he gained a lot of his fan base today. Mm-hmm. Because you know, there's so many people that are in love with this guy. I'll be honest, I was every day Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial, watching it on Law and Order, the Law and Order channel. Really, every Damn. single day, bro. I had never gotten so interested in law since that trial. 
And I would pay attention. Like, I learned so many things about law within that trial because it went on for, like, at least a month or two, I think. That was long, yeah. Dude, and I would watch everything. I'd watch highlights. Like, if I couldn't watch the live stream today, I'd just watch all the highlights of, like, what, what, what was popping. Oh, my God. That was probably the greatest trial I've ever watched in my life, dude. That was so good. Like, it, it was it was if the glove doesn't fit it must have dude it was it, it, it just got to a point where like at first i wasn't going for anyone i just wanted to see what everyone had to say like both sides and um, then amber heard just started like really like acting hard. shady about shit and i'm just like you're a fucking lying sack of shit aren't you and like and you're doing cocaine in the goddamn room <laughs> You can't tell me every time she's blowing her nose that yeah, she's not doing yeah. fucking cocaine, bro. That's like a weird way to I'm blow I'm like, y'all realize she's a fucking actress, so she can cry at, at, on command at any time she wants. Um, I like that burn where it's like a TMZ. Oh, yeah. yeah. He goes, uh, he goes. so you're just here to get your your five your five minutes of fame. He goes, oh, no, I'm complete. He goes, I could say the same thing about you for taking Amber Heard as a client. And everyone's <laughs> like, oh, shit. And Johnny Depp's like, yeah, we got it, we got it. Yep. So, so it's uh it's it's yeah I, I i was in love and then i just recently started watching um they have a, a netflix documentary that's called Debt be heard oh, and damn. it's literally just live streams of people and reactions of people <laughs> of every day breaking it down or something but then you're seeing like for the first time they edited it so it was like the testimony side to side so it's like you would hear johnny's side and then you would hear amber's like right after so it was like a quicker version of like both their testimonies side by side as like this is what she said about it. This is what he said about that situation. And then you would see like the evidence and everything. And then you'd see like pictures and reactions. And stuff. There's this one streamer who he like wears a Deadpool mask <laughs> and he was just like on it. Like he actually got in one of the days at the trial in person, like on the first day. Oh, wow. Cause they had visitor passes that you can go and watch it. Uh -huh. And he was in there day one and he had Deadpool. Like, no, he was oh, okay. it himself because it's a court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm like, what a legend. He but he got in day one, and he was talking about it on stream, and then he would keep up with it afterwards. But, like, there were so many people trying to go. There, there was lines forming every single night just to try to get into that courtroom because everybody wanted to see Johnny. <laughs> like, it, it was nuts. Like, you'd never seen a courtroom, and it was a small courtroom, but you've never seen a courtroom that full because of the celebrities that were involved. You know, it's mm -hmm. like you had some, uh, pretty much everyone that was at that courthouse was for Johnny Depp. I don't even know if there was anybody that was for Amber Heard. Pretty sure, but like maybe, but quiet down down. Yeah, like not. I don't want to. Like yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Johnny Depp fans here. I don't want to get my ass kicked. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was, I was, dude, I was all on that, bro. I was, I was fucking. It was the it was memes nuts. that were coming out of it. That's all. Oh, it was great. Up, like. My dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> dude, that, that, when I saw that, I'm like, why does that pertain to the story? What does your dog stepping on a bee have to do with shit? So dumb. She was. And then she's supposed to be an Aquaman, but I think they're going to... No, they, they they already said they're going to remove her. So what I heard was... She was gonna, only in there for like five she, minutes or something. She's going to be in the beginning, but it's going to be one of those scenarios where she gets hospitalized. Because she, she was in the trailer still. Really? Uh -huh. she, you see her for like a brief second trying to break To be fair, I, I didn't see the Aquaman trailer. I'm going to go see it. This is supposed to be the last DC movie before the new James Gunn regime happens, mm -hmm. where he starts actually doing the stuff he wants to do as, as CEO. Um, I'm excited to see what James Gunn has to do, dude. He's got a good little plan starting up with with well known characters, not so well known characters, and if we know anything about James Gunn, this he does guy a is, good unknown character. Yeah. yeah, he's good at bringing the unknown to the known and making them household names. He did that with Guardians of the Galaxy. He did it with his version of the Suicide Squad. Um, yeah, he did a good job. I mean, who would have thought we would see Polka Dot Man on a fucking big screen movie? <laughs> and be Fucking the heart of it. Fucking Peacemaker, bro. Like, it, I, John Cena elevated that character. Oh, it was great. I, I didn't think that King Shark could be pulled off, and he pulled that shit off. And Sylvester Stallone as King Shark was the greatest shit ever. Dude. That was funny. I was like, whoever thought of this casting idea <laughs> deserves a fucking Academy Award. Yeah. Because this is the greatest. Uh, <laughs> just like, he's got the voice for it, dude. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. I loved it, dude. I loved it. I, like, I can't wait to see what he does. He's going to be directing the Superman movie. Excited for that. I've never been a huge fan of Superman. My dad's a huge fan of Superman. I mean, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of DC, so I'm excited. If, it's, if Gunn's doing it, I have a lot of faith. He's got he's got some casting already. Yeah, I've already seen like he has Superman and he's got his Superman like a sidekick. He's got his Lois. He's got his Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen. There Miss Tess Bacher. Um, he's got his Lex Luthor, Nicholas Holt from I don't know if you watched the Menu. Fantastic. No. Movie. 
Menu I've heard great. mixed reviews about it. Menu oh, was yeah. great. It was fantastic. If you get a chance, watch it. It's like it's more of a thriller, but it, yeah. it's 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 good. You got Voldemort, main guy in there, dude. On your Taylor. No Joy. wonder he looks familiar. I'm always, I always looked at that dude. cover and I'm like, that guy. He is looks familiar. Phenomenal. I didn't uh, recognize him without the nose. He looks phenomenal. Or he is phenomenal in that movie. He is something that like when he comes on screen, you're just like the fuck's going on and like as the night progresses you're just like what the fuck like it is like a movie that's that takes you on a weird twist and things and stuff and it's 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 good the menu is is really good it's psychological like thriller but it's really good check that out yeah i'll see (laughs) (laughs) check that i mean i got a lot of time on my hands i watch a lot of movies so um let's see what else has been going on? What's been going on? I mean, there's been a lot four years. I mean, you, you have to get you get. I don't. I don't mean to bring this into the spotlight too much, and I know you don't want to as much, but get a fucking kid, dude. Congratulations. Yeah. Two weeks and two days ago. Congratulations, man. Thank you. He was supposed to be here December second, which would have been this Saturday. Oh wow! But he came three weeks early. Wow. Unexpectedly and healthy and everything. Thank God. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, congratulations, dude. I Thank watched. You. I watched the video this morning and. You know, you were talking about, uh, you know, just what the plans are coming back, why the reason you were gone, all that stuff. And then at the end, you just you brought, in, you brought in the little guy. And I was like, I didn't even know you had a kid, dude. That's what's up. No one did. Because yeah, I haven't really posted. I When I'm like, okay, I'm going to be gone, I'm like, I'm going to be gone from everything. Yeah. I go, I don't want just no like one to know privacy. anything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm now like, you've had a little grace period and no, it's, it's like, public now, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, and for those who don't know, no, we're not breaking the news here on the Nights of Horror. <laughs> he broke the news on his channel when he introduced his son into the video. Uh, we're just, we're, 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 we're just stoked, discussing man. about yeah, it. Yeah, we're yeah. just, we're stoked for you, man. That's cool. Uh, what's the little guy's name? Uh, Kike. Kike. Yeah, Luis Enrique. Oh, man. Hello. Kiki, do you love me? <laughs> That's going to be a song growing up. Watch. Well, there was a Dodger player. Yeah, Kike, Kike. Hernandez. And his number is 14. And he was born on the 14th, so it's like ironic as hell. Like, I know, dude. He's the next Dodger. You are. <laughs> You're gonna become a baseball fan real quick. I'll enjoy his fame and money, but I'll be like, "Congrats! Take your mom to the game. It's fine." <laughs> hey, bro. If we're sitting, in the, if we're sitting behind home plate, dude, I'm gonna be like, "Hey, I'm going too. It's all you can eat." <laughs> there you go. That's what we'll sell you. It's all you can eat. That'll make a challenge out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Dodger Stadium and we said we saw how much you can really eat. Not clickbait. Honestly, I did think about like doing a hot dog every uh, inning. Oh my god, there you go. that's not bad actually. That's pretty good. Depending, yeah. it depends how fast the innings go though. Sometimes they can go really fast. Sometimes they can go slow. Yeah, depends on the day of the game. I remember my first Dodger game that my wife took me to. Uh, the fucking lights went out. <laughs> oh, like, you were at the game where the lights yeah, went out, huh? For like 30, 40 minutes, I was like, "What? Isn't it over?" No. I'm like, "What do you mean no?" Like it's over, dude. I power's uh, out. There's no game. I've had some fun times at Dodger games, dude. I usually we usually go as a family. We we, we usually do like one or two games a year. Um, I love going to Dodger Stadium, dude. I got to do. My, I think I did my one game this year. It was with the entire family and my girlfriend and everything. So that was a lot of fun. It was me, my stepsister Marissa, uh, my mom, my um, stepdad Mike. Uh, my girlfriend, my nana and grandpa, we all, we went up to Dodger Stadium for the day or for the game. It was a night game and they had the fireworks show at night. Oh. So it was cool. Friday um, night fireworks. But we had good seats, dude. We were like on the field level on the very top. Like, like there's like a bar section kind of like up oh, there. Okay. And I always thought that was like a first come first serve kind of thing, but they're actually seats. You can buy them. Mm-hmm. So the, so we got that whole section and that was cool, dude. Like, cause we kind of had like a bar it was kind of like how this is where I kind of just lean on the table and just watch the game. We had the snacks right behind us. You know, we had the merch where, where she likes to seat is the left field pavilion. Yeah. That's a, that's a good spot too. I get too distracted (laughs) since I don't understand the game. I'm like, you're just looking around at everything. I am. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm just looking around. I'm like feeling the energy in the crowd. I'm like, this is cool. And I'm looking at, I'm looking more at the crowd and I'm like, Oh, they're playing right now. Yeah. 
It's not like wrestling where it's like, and introducing, like, there's we, no we, announcement. We both went to WrestleMania this year. We Yes. So I was only there for night one. You went for night one. That, I arguably, I think that was the best night. Yeah. Um, I was happy. Night, After seeing it. On paper, night two should have been, been the, the better one. Yes. But it just it didn't deliver. It was still fun, but it didn't deliver. Night one for me Something, was more memorable. I don't know if it was a vibe or just... Something even on TV you could tell like yeah. oh there it's not well a matchmaker for whatever reason that night uh, looked like I think uh, Shayna Baszler got injured she had like an ankle injury during her match yeah. and she was out most of the match and then Ronda was to her so the other team Ronda was like, just being Ronda was right there trying to take her over and the other the other team had to just kind of like improvise it and then she and then came in out nowhere for the yeah. roll up I'm like what the fuck. You were gone the whole match. What the hell happened? Yeah. Um, Edge McMahon, versus Finn had a... It had a botch, too. Where like, the I think ladder? The, yeah, Finn was bleeding. Yeah, the ladder hit him right. So he was trying to improvise for a little bit. Um, Shane Les- McMahon, like you were saying, yeah. Lesnar versus Omos didn't live up to the hype. Omos was in control most of the time for Lesnar just to steal it like that. Well, after yeah. one F5, it was like, ah, come on, It's bro. like, dude, really? That's all it took? It was like F5? Um the lock Brock was a scary guy. I would not. Oh, of course. I'm okay. good. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was that was something. And then um, Cody versus Roman. Oh god. <laughs> I knew Roman was gonna win. There was not a doubt in my head. See, for the first time in a long time, that was I will say, and this was the good storytelling of Triple H. Mm-hmm. I I was I, I just. That was an unpredictable match for me. It could have gone one of two ways, to be honest with you. It could have. But to me, his title reign needed to go to a thousand days. Yeah. And that's where I that's where I was like, nah, I think they're gonna keep the a thousand. I was like, I don't know though, bro. They could, this could be like a huge deal for Cody. Like yeah. he's gonna be the one that dethrones Roman and that's a huge deal. He still will be more than likely. I'll tell you what sucked, okay, out of that whole weekend was the night after WrestleMania. The Monday night raw. I was, I was there. tempted to go there. Oh, SmackDown. I so much saw you because I was on the rafters and I took pictures of you. Yeah, I was at SmackDown. That's kind of uh, where. So, so, so this is what happened with that weekend leading up. Uh, I just noticed you had a brick cracker. Were you there at the Honda Center? No, I went to the, uh, uh, we, we went out to Arizona with Sammy and we saw him out there. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, we saw him. He was, he was fucking hilarious. Tom Segura is way better. Than I like Tom Segura a lot. Too. I went to Vegas this year to I see wanna, him. I want to go see him next. But, he's uh, fucking hilarious. Yeah, he's, he's fucking, he's fun. But I, and I like the fact that he's, he performs at smaller venues so like you can be more up close and personal. He's well, and funny. Bert and Tom are doing a show in Vegas in February, I think. Really? Yeah. Fuck. That sounds like that's pretty tempting. Oh, you know why? Because yeah. fucking football. Or Bert, yeah, Bert goes to the Super Bowl over here. Yeah. Never mind. I'm going to, I'm going to avoid Vegas at all costs, dude. <laughs> If you're not going for the Super Bowl, you're going to go get fucked up at the hotels and around the Super Bowl. People are going to be betting like crazy. Hotels are going to be stupid well, crazy The F1 expensive. right now is fucking nuts. Well, I have a buddy who lives out in Vegas. He works at the Sphere. Oh, okay. And uh, he was telling me that, uh, well, obviously, they just announced they signed a 10-year contract to have it at Vegas every for the next 10 years. Oh, I did not know that. F1, Bullshit. yeah. So that's it sucks. I mean, I, I've recently just, just got into the Vegas scene. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't been to Vegas prior to this year. I hadn't been to Vegas since I was 12. Okay. So like going to Vegas for the first time, I think it was in June when we, when me and my girlfriend first went, um, I know you guys did that it chapter thing. Right? Yeah. The first time we went, we did the, the it experience. They opened chapter one was open. Chapter two was being worked on. Chapter two is now open. We've been trying to go, get back to go to it, but just the stars haven't been aligning. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that, you know, things are kind of starting to settle down a little bit. We're, we're planning another trip. Uh, I think April we want to try to go. Um, but, yeah, that F1, my, my buddy was telling me that it was, it was a clusterfuck to get to work because he worked at the Sphere. Um, and he said that it was just – he's so glad that it's – he said a lot of it's actually already gone. Oh, okay. uh, they, 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 They've gotten about, like, 80 to 90% of it gone. It's just minor things here and there. But he was also telling me that means every single year they're just going to repave the streets. I'm like, that means you all motherfuckers are going to have some nice streets for like the next <laughs> 10 years, bro. So I was oh, like. One week of nightmares. Fuck. fuck, dude. But yeah, he said it was, it was, it was hell, dude. But um, I was talking to him about since he worked at the Sphere, I was like, it'd be cool if WWE posted up and did an event here. I was like, if UFC is already going to do an event here next Mexican Independence Day, I yeah. was like, and they're. 
a pretty similar setup to WWE. Mm -hmm. It's an octagon in the middle, but like, how do you do that with the sphere? You know, yeah, the way that's it's shaped yeah. out. Well, fucking the SoFi Stadium. I didn't, that was the first time I ever gone, yeah, and I was floor seats. Oh, you got floor? Damn, Foss, uh, you got money, bro. I'm gonna no, that. they were cheap. How much you getting for? Five hundred each for the oh, just for the one. But you went for the one night. For right? one night, yeah, yeah. Does that mean you got to see Dirty Dom? Wait, was that night too? No, Dirty Dom was night one. Was Ray? Yeah. Fucking Dirty Dom. <laughs> the Viva La Ra- Dude. Dude, I lost, I lost my, my shit. shit. Dude, I heard the Viva La Raza. I was like, oh, fuck. I, I don't cheer often, but I cheered up for that moment. Eddie. Like, Eddie was my shit, dude. Dude, Eddie was the fuck. That's I, the reason I, I got that undisputed championship for Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, that was his I have a poster right of him there. that from when he died. I uh, I think, and I, and I constantly say this, constantly, there will never be another Eddie Guerrero. Hell no. He did what he did so perfectly to the point where it was one of those things where it was like his vibe, his his frog heart, splash, his, his everything, the way he wrestled, the lie, the cheat. The Dom steal. tries to implicate it a little bit, but it's like, Dick, you ain't you ain't getting nothing close, Eddie. I'm trying to see if I have where I sat for Mania. Oh yeah. I was like row three in that area. Oh fuck! You had a pretty good seat. So yeah. So Sammy was there that weekend too. Um, yeah, I, I I literally tried to zoom in to find you guys, guys. It looked like you guys were kind of like behind no. the WrestleMania, or where, if you guys were separate. So I don't was, know. Yeah. So so we got separate tickets. My my uh, my mom and my my grandma bought us tickets for. Um, is that the there it is? That girl, that yeah. was dope. That, that stage was dope, dude. Yes, it was. I really liked it a lot. Like I, I wish they would have changed the. They would have changed the site that there wasn't so much the posters all the time. Yeah. But that was so bad. I, 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 I like avoided all spoilers leading up to actually going to see it in person. Um, and it was just like my inner child coming out and going to WrestleMania. Oh, of course. Like I had never been to a WrestleMania ever. No, neither have I. I've been to SummerSlam. I've been to a Hell in a Cell. I've been to a, I've been to a War Games match. Oh, okay. Um, though that was when NXT was still doing it too. Uh, I have been to a couple Raws. I went to a SmackDown. I've been to the Hall of Fame now. Yeah. WrestleMania. I love for the Hall of Fame. I won't lie. I, After like the second induction, I'm like, I, I took my buddy Matt with me. Um, and we really wanted to see Rey Mysterio get inducted because, you know, we both, I mean, just like you two, but we loved Rey Mysterio growing up and just of to kind of see that and to see all the people. Because where we were sitting, like literally right behind us was all the superstars. So I texted like, my wife, fucking Rob Van Dam is here. She goes, who? I'm like, did you see my what? sign? Yeah, I took I took oh, yeah, pictures took of you. Pictures yeah, of yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. With Roman right. and Cody, and I'm like, let me try and get both of you, and like, there you go. Oh, you like, t- no, you have a picture of a <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, no, we had a great night that night, dude. I mean, my buddy's obsessed with Rhea Ripley, so he was drooling over Rhea Ripley. I mean, but who is this yeah. one? You know, uh, it was cool for me because I got to see like to see all the superstars right there, and like they were kind of interacting with us and shit, like. When they can, but they try to remain serious and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was a it was a fun weekend though. I mean, and then we got to that that Friday night SmackDown. We went to the Superstore, which I was kind of mad they didn't do like a Superstore like they've done with the other WrestleManias in the past. Yeah, I expected it to be way bigger way and better, with more but stuff. Like, but like, I, I I feel like what they had was pretty cool because it was the last time WrestleMania came to Hollywood and they had like Eddie's fucking lowrider that his was boots, his yeah. style, like all the memorabilia they had was cool. I think. Take for the store, shit. the store when if you went like when it first opened, like it was fully stocked with everything. It was dope. Uh, I we, think I was there like an hour after you. Like the line was huge, but it moved quick. Yeah, we we got in pretty quick because we got we, there early just so we could do that. Yeah, and then we waited. I, I think literally because I was looking at your story, the, the second you went in is the second I got in line. Yeah, and so, it was like a twenty minute line, dude. We I I had as a kid, I have always dreamed sitting ringside, you know, and and so. When I found out for, so for Christmas, I asked my, my mom and my grandma to get us WrestleMania tickets, Mm -hmm. me and my girlfriend and our original seats were all like, we were on the fucking nosebleeds. We were high up. Right. I just, to myself, I was like, at that point, it's not worth it for me. I just wanted to be there. I didn't care like where I sat. I was just like, I want to be in that environment. I want to witness it with my own eyes. Yeah. Cause I've seen it on TV. It looks amazing to be at. And I'm glad I did. Cause the energy at that WrestleMania has, is nothing that I've ever felt, dude. It was awesome. Sammy and Kevin winning. 
<sighs> the energy yeah. day. I was yeah, like, dude. God damn. That was nuts. Um, I hated how they like didn't go full on the pyro this year though. Yeah, that kind they of half assed it yeah. hard. I was like, they did the sound effects. Yeah, I'm like, I'm bro, what, what the? F- f- you just trying to I was like, are they like CGIing it on TV? Yeah. I'm like, come I was on, like, they're just fucking playing the sound effects and shit. So we sat on the top for night one, um, and that was our seats for both nights. But for night one, we sat on there for the majority of the show. Like halfway through, my 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 girlfriend was freaking out because it, so high. It, it's like steep. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. And so we don't do well with it. I, I'm fine with it, but she she was freaking out. Ironically enough, I was I was telling my friends, I'm like, I'm probably not going to be on TV. Like, I'm very high up. There's not going to be. My fucking friend tells me, my buddy Matt, he goes, oh, I'm watching the pre-show. They just showed you. I'm Shut like, what do you mean they up. just showed me? I'm like, yeah, they have a camera right behind you on the very top, and they panned out, and then you can see your ass standing up. I was like, well, fucking shit. I guess I made it on WrestleMania. That's awesome. Hell yeah. I was like, well, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, midway through that first one, we went down to, like, that first level where it's kind of, like, it's still high up, but it's way better. And we were standing at the bars because, you know, how at SoFi, they have, like, those bars. Like, when you come up from your aisle, like, they have those bar, like, tables right there. And you can just kind of lean right there and watch and stand if you want at certain areas. Um, and so we came up, and we were just chilling at the bar for that last half of the first night of night one. We were just standing the whole night. And it was fun. We were going ape shit. We were going crazy, especially when Miz brought out fucking uh, Pat McAfee and all that. Oh, yeah. Like, Sammy's a huge Pat McAfee fan, so he probably <laughs> lost his shit. But then for night two, we were standing at the bar area, but near where Sammy was sitting. So, like, the bar was, like, right here. Sammy was, like, two rows down. Mm. So, like, we can talk to each other and shit. We were, we were going shit. But, like, to hear, like, Edge come out to, like, Slayer and shit like that, like, that was cool. And to kind of be there for all that, that was fun. The Gunther match was cool. Oh, that triple threat was amazing. Fucking chops here from around the world. <laughs> Shit, you know, it's like they went ham. Yeah, it was it was it was a good uh I had fun. I, I did. And then that Monday night raw came and it fucking I remember me. sitting on like, do I get tickets to join No, you I go with I did the right thing, of course. You yeah. did the right thing because Vince was like, I'm on a power trip. I'm gonna change the whole script last minute. I'm like, just stop. Why? Because he had he had the company in his hands. No, he there. night two he had control actually, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's where it fucked up. That's the vibe that was fucked up. So that kind of scared me when I when I watched that raw because I was like, if this is what WWE's gonna go back to, dude, we are <sighs> fucked. And then, like, it, it wasn't that, dude. Like, after that, like, they realized Vince fucked up, and they gave full control to fucking Triple H again. I heard, like, Thank that God. day of Raw, he made so many script changes, like, mm-hmm. super last minute. Like, Seth Rollins was supposed to have an actual promo on that Raw, and they just, they let him sing his song, and then they, that was it. And Bounce. I was like... I remember, I remember seeing a clip that he was like, what the fuck you mean this is it? Yeah. It, it was, was very... It was in the dark, because I remember seeing him, like, arguing with someone, like, oh, babe, he looks pissed off. Yeah. I was like, legit. How about that spot with CM Punk on Saturday, though? I I was certain he was never coming back. Huh? I was certain he was never coming back. Ten years. Because. And, yeah, I was. I was have you ever seen too. the documentary of him, Best in the World? Yeah, I have it. Okay. I used to. And it's on the network. I actually saw it last night. Where his brother stole from him and he hadn't forgiven him. And yeah. At that point, it was like 12 plus years. Yeah. So I go. This fool can hold a grudge. Oh, yeah. This fool will never be back. Yeah. I go, as they say, never see never, but this guy's the one. For real. Everything he said in AEW, like, I don't watch AEW, but, you know, when there's clips online, I'm like, okay, I'll watch yeah, it. Yeah, I do, too. I keep up with certain stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, MJF, I'll, I'll keep I love, up with I, it. Yeah. I hope he goes to WWE one day. I doubt it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel now, like though, nowadays, yeah, he might stay at AEW, but, like, if you would ask me a year ago, I'd be like, yeah, he's going to WWE. Yeah, for sure. But, no. Uh yeah i saw for certain and to be honest was everything that was happening with him at AEW. i didn't want him over here sam bunk and i'm like talking about the thing he did with the bucks and yeah and now it verifies that it, he was the problem at wwe too yeah he's too believing in his own hype i feel like this he's time good around, he's learned a lot though like he's learned well supposedly it's in his clause that if he acts up he's gone well, and not only that, but, like, coming from a company, like, and I don't know how much you, you've kept up with AEW or whatnot, but I, I, I kind of keep my ear, though, over there because I want to see. Right now, we're living in a great time of wrestling. Of course. There's practically, if you if you, if you you can find the right stuff and everything, there is practically wrestling on every night of the week. Mm-hmm. 
you know, if it's WWE, if it's fucking AEW, if New it's Japan, fucking, uh, TNA. TNA just came back. They just got the TNA name back. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know they changed it, to be honest. Yeah, it was just Impact for the longest, and then now they brought, they brought it called TNA again. Um yeah, like yeah, all the indie stuff too, like uh, G- GCW, Game Changer Wrestling is one of the biggest. I know you've been to a couple of indie shows. I, I went to one indie show and it was, uh, I forget, I think it was Compton Mania or something like that, but it was it was like a, it was in a fucking church parking lot. <laughs> and then. Uh, well, I remember a while back ago, there was one here at the town square. No shit. Yeah, it was, it was advertised. I was like, oh, wrestling here in Town Square. I wanted Dude, to go, but I was busy that I'm like, When I introduce you to Rob, he knows, like, all the indie promotions and shit. And he knows that he, you think you you and I know wrestling? This guy knows wrestling. Well, he's a lot older than, well, I don't know about a lot, but I know he's older, right? I think he just turned 40. Oh, yeah, he's a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's but he's got the mentality of a fucking 10-year-old, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but has the energy too. Yeah, Literally. it's like it's like this. The, he's like one of the stepbrothers. You know, it's mm-hmm. like from fucking. He's, he's. I think he'd be like the fucking John C. Riley of, <laughs> of the you know the two. But he uh, he knows like the indie guys. He knows the indie promotion. He knew who these guys were before WWE. Like I always say, La Knight. I, 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 I I'm a huge La Knight fan. Yeah, right I know. As is, yeah, I was, as yeah. is the fucking yeah. <laughs> as is the rest of the world right now. Um. But he was like, it's not L.A. Knight, it's Eli Drake. I'm like, it's L.A. Knight now. Okay, Eli was his Respect fucking- the name that yeah. became. Now, what's worrying me about the CM Punk return, I, I'm, I'm stoked for it. I like Punk. But what's worrying me now is that everything they just built with L.A. Knight is going to get overshadowed now. Not if he stays on Raw. I hope him and Randy stay on Raw. Yeah. And LA well, Knight. even if they bring Randy to SmackDown, I don't think yeah, they could do it. They can do a work with LA Knight yeah. with him if they wanted to. Um, but LA Knight's on this streak. I'm just so pissed off that they haven't given him a title opportunity. Like as far as like giving him, letting him win the title and then showing him having a little title reign. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm so mad that they haven't done that. Like I'm hoping he challenges Logan oh, Paul. Tomorrow. Okay, I was about to say was any yeah he definitely deserves the United States Championship. Logan Paul winning the United States Championship pissed me off too. He's a good wrestler. He's a very good wrestler. Surprisingly, I, 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 I will give will, him that. I will, yeah, exactly. As much as I still I, hate him as a person. That's what exactly what I was gonna say. Exactly as as much I as hate I hate him, him, him as a person, he's a good wrestler. I hate him as a person. He I should have say. not won the United States Championship. No, not one bit. And and so I and it's now odd gone to shit because I haven't seen him. I since. will give him the respect of this though. He did save Rey Mysterio's life in that match. Did you see that? I I hear like yeah he did the right thing but he also kind of botched it because he wasn't in the right spot supposedly I don't know obviously and yeah. I wasn't there to script the match or anything but he did at least aware enough to go and catch him catch him yeah that was that was smart dude he would have died yeah severely injured at least yeah he would have probably ended his career right there. Which is a good career. I'm surprised he's... I, I'm like, all right, that's it. Dominic's winning at WrestleMania. He's in the Hall of Fame. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I thought that that was going to be... I thought that for sure they were going to do that. It was like Pass a, the torch. It was like a it was like a title versus career match or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or put everything on the line, your career and everything, and they didn't go that route. So I was like, okay, I guess we're not doing that yet then. I feel like it's not done, though. Like that story? Yeah, I think Ray has a few more years in his belt left. Uh, Randy's What's trying to go surgery. Is he, he 10 years. Is? He's trying to go 10. Let's see if he can do it. He's just got to be careful. 54. Like, is he 54? Randy? No, he would be 10. Oh, he's 44, he's right, 44 now. right now. So 54. Fuck. He is jacked. He, he got, jacked. got ripped. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. He got, that's jacked. how I should have returned. I should have yeah. gone, gone missing for one more year. <laughs> I was like, holy Dude, yeah, shit. He got, he got ripped. And I was just kind of looking. I was more that. happy to see wow. Randy than CM Punk, to be honest. Um, For me, it was one of those things as a wrestling fan that I knew for a fact he was going to come back. And what sold that for me, knowing to solidify that he was going to come back, was when the venue requested that WWE increase the amount of seats. So they scaled down their entrance to so they can open up that whole area so they can add more seats. Oh. And when I heard that, I was like, he is coming back for sure. Now, I know I, I heard things over the weekend that, like, he t- he signed last minute, so a lot of people didn't know. Like, he was very secretive of him even coming. Yeah. 
but it was I knew, like money in the bank all over again. Yeah, like I knew the minute they they when they released the ticket cap and they, they were gonna scale. And down supposedly the stage. they've been teasing him a lot, like a lot of his well, phrases, yeah, his phrases and, and stuff. Yeah. And and that I've been following that a lot too. And and I was like, yeah, he's coming back, dude. He he's got he's got so much bridges burned over at AEW. He can't come back to AEW. To a degree, he burned bridges over here too. He did, but it's under a new regime. Regime. Like it's not, but it's still, he hated triple H so much. Yeah. But at the same time, it's been 10 years, you know, and there's so much that a conversation can do and they're both willing to put their personal shit aside and do what's best for what's the business. Well, definitely Vince taught that to triple H. Yeah. And and I think triple H has been doing an amazing job with booking, booking Mm -hmm. and storytelling and, and everything. And then having Sean in charge with NXT, you know, he trained Sean while he was doing NXT. They did that shit together. So, like, having him do it by himself now, Sean's doing an amazing job over there at NXT. You know, they reverted it back to the fucking black and gold <laughs> NXT brand. NXT 2.0 was so... That was so terrible. To I'm be like, fair, I'm not a huge NXT fan. I would just, like, watch clips every now and then. I like NXT only because you, you get to see who's going to be the future of the... Com- of the of the, who's going to be the next big thing on wrestling. And The thing is, like... It's good booking, too. Back in the day, obviously, in the Vince regime. When Triple was, H was in charge of NXT, when it was more heavy metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not, not only that, but, like, when they were brought up, Keith Lee, they butchered the fuck out of him. And yeah. And, and that Damian was... Damian Cross and... That was the sad part was Triple H... Was, Bobcat Lee. <sighs> Triple H worked so hard to get these guys to where they were, and then they were just underutilized in the fucking hard roster. Mm-hmm. But if you notice, little by little, he's bringing... More and more back, and a lot of people are working. I'm hearing now that they're trying to land a deal with Sasha Banks to bring her back by Royal Rumble. Oh, okay. But it's up to her if she wants to come back. A lot of people are are, are liking. I mean, WWE is in a healthy state. I think it's the most successful it's been in a long time. You know, they're they're well, they were butchering it for a long time. It was Vince from Vince. like oh eight oh nine to like twenty twenty one. It was Vince. He just he wanted it his way or the highway, and like and wanted to laugh and. And fucking Triple H is like, I know how to story tell. I've been doing this shit for years. And I know I mean, what the fan wants. Yeah, you know, know what? what the fans want. Like, he he, he was honestly, when I heard Triple H was going to be in charge, I was super stoked for this. So I was like, and then when I finally, when they did the, the merger with UFC, you know, Endeavor and, and the TKO and everything, and they gave full creative control to Triple H, I'm like, we're, Very in, happy. we're in good yep. hands. But what it makes me laugh is I, I do watch all those press conferences after the, the premium live events. He's well, always coming out with this statistic. Oh, this was the the highest selling, uh, most tickets sold for a Survivor Series in history, the most watched in history. And I'm just like, we don't care. I just want to know what was the thought process of bringing back CM Punk. And then Cody Rhodes. Can <laughs> he came out. He goes, I guess I'm. I guess I'm last. So uh, let me see. What, let me get my glasses here. <laughs> he knows, bro. He knows. Oh yeah, yeah. He fucking Cody knows, knows how sure. to sell it. Yeah, he, he fucking knows. Let's talk about the biggest return of the night. Our truth, man. Yeah, I can't believe we kept that a secret. <laughs> now that was that was I I. What was that? I think it was something. I don't. Oh, it was the thing. Yeah. Man, I'm be getting scared late at night, bro. I'll be watching too much horror movies. Um, <laughs> no, I I thought that uh, this Survivor Series was. I, I think I, I think adding the war game stipulation to Survivor Series just made it even better. I love it. But I do miss an old fashioned Survivor five Series match. Yeah. Elimination. Match. I feel like you could still do that too with Survivor Series. Like you yeah, can I don't know why they exclude it. Give like the tag teams or like the undercard like even if the, if it was a war game, like a war game elimination. Yeah. That would be fun. That's new. That's different. Yeah. yeah. And it and it adds well, to the Survivor at that, Series. At that point it'd kind of be essentially just elimination chamber, just with the war game stipulation. Uh, that's true. Well, you got the option of escaping. I love the whole concept of war games. The whole like two you know, rings, two rings, one cage, and one by one, everybody comes in, and then the match doesn't officially start till everyone's in the ring. Yeah. And then uh, I, I think it was very bittersweet to watch Cody wrestle in the the match his dad created. Like that for me was like wow, dude! Like that's fucking bitch. It's a full like, circle. It is full circle. Like your dad created this match. Now you're finally fighting one. In a WWE ring where you belong, mm-hmm. like that was fucking cool, like that was insane to me. And and that War Games match was good. The girls, the the ladies one was amazing too, man. They they've yeah. been proving what they have. And yeah, I mean, you know, my buddy made a good point recently about uh, the current state of WWE. 
because I I made a point earlier this week that I hate seeing part time champions. I mean, with Roman Reigns and 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 Logan Paul, it kind of bothers me to the fact that we have these champions. Roman and, Reigns does not bother me. He it put into work for the last two three years. It's one of those things where I just kind of gave up on it as oh. far as letting it bother me because I'm just like, okay, I already kind of know where they're going creative with this. And now I'm just forced to wait to what to see what happens with the end goal of this. So at this point, I get it. He's doing what he's doing. I just wish that we had someone that can come and more represented. Yeah, I want someone every week, like what Seth Rollins is doing. That's why they brought back the World Heavyweight Championship because they wanted, they knew they were gonna do that long term. So they were like, we need a fucking. They knew big, they fucked up. We need a big championship to be represented every week. And Seth Rollins is like, I yeah, I got you. I'm the guy. Yeah. And then now with Logan Paul, it's like the guy only rest, wrestles PLEs. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't want to see, one, I don't want to see Logan Paul as champion. <laughs> and two, I do not want to see another part-time champion. I'm just like, LA Knight's been working his fucking ass off. He can, he's on every single fucking week. Mm-hmm. He can be a perfect representation of the United States championship. But you guys don't want to go that route. You know, or, and I'm glad they gave him that world title match, but I was like, we all knew that he was going to win. <laughs> Like, going into that match, I was like, you're not going to win, dude. No. Like, as much no. as I want you to win, I just know where the story is going with Roman, and you're not the finish line yet. Yeah. And who knows if he ever will be. Who knows what the story will be with Cody. Because <sighs> Cody's so going to be a defending champion for a while. Yeah. Not as long as Roman, obviously, but at least a year, I, I think. I did read... Um, I read a a funny fan theory. I'm just I'm sorry. My tat my new tattoo starting to go to its uh, peel peel phase. Uh, yeah, I accidentally itched it, and I think I peeled it. And I was like, "Fuck, I gotta stop doing that because I can't fuck with that." Yeah. Um, I did just see a uh, a fan theory that was pretty good. Is what if after Roman loses the title? Because you know Roman, he might not be wrestling for another year or so. Like after WrestleMania 40, he might call quits and retire. Because his leukemia came back, oh, or what? it's it's some, something like that. It's starting to bother his. It oh, dude, his I body got chills again. from that. Fuck that. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things where he he's he might call retires after WrestleMania forty. Damn, that sucks. So we might literally only have this one last WrestleMania with him. It it, it depends how he feels. Of course, physically. and he could always come back like he did last time. But, but they are trying to make him beat Hogan's reign, and in order to do that, he's got to win the title past WrestleMania forty. <laughs> so. Oh, I don't know when he's going to get dethroned. It ain't going to be WrestleMania, though, unless they throw us a curveball. Because I think unless to make the a- bloodline dies by February, I don't I think know where he- bloodline. I mean, I mean, it looks like they're having trust issues with Jimmy, and yeah. Solo is kind of in the cot in the middle of it, and he looks like he wants to take over. I don't know. I don't know where that's going. I mean, Judgment Day is starting to become a little too much for me too. But yeah, it is what it is. I feel like both those factions should just die. Something needs to change. Judgment Day runs Raw. Bloodline runs fucking SmackDown. And then they're like trying to intervene with each other. Like, what for? Drew McIntyre. I don't know. I'm just waiting for no more words to come back. <laughs> Everybody is. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, broken, dreams. Broken, dreams. broken dreams. Yeah. No more words. That's fucking Jeff Hardy. <laughs> um. Yeah. Broken dreams. You don't think he's going to resign? <sighs> I feel like they're fucking with him too much. I feel like they're setting up something bigger. So he can bring back the Broken Dreams theme. That's not like a good payoff though. <laughs> like at the end of the day, you want he wants to be champion and deserves to be champion with a crowd. Now here's the real kicker. With all the pawns and players on the chessboard now, who is the who is CM your Punk. prediction for the Royal Rumble? Oh, the winner? Yeah. CM Punk. You think it's going to be Punk? You think they're going to do that to Punk to set up him versus Seth, Seth at Ra- Mania? Well, you know they've both never main evented at WrestleMania too. It's going to be a main event for night one. That's what I'm saying. They both never main evented. So they're, they're kind of looking at it. This is our way to cash in that ticket. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. I mean. If it's the main event. Because. They're already laying the foundation down. They both talk shit about each other on Raw this past week. In a kind of, he, you know. Seth had his issues. He let the audience do it. And then he said what he had to say. And then freaking Punk was like, not a lot of people. And some people don't like me here. He's like, I'll talk about that. I'll get to that on another topic, another day. Yeah. Who do you think his first rival is going to be with? I don't think it's going to be with Seth immediately. 
No, because he's still fighting McIntyre. Yeah, he's under the McIntyre and Uso. He's got Uso next Monday. I think so. Drew, McIntyre's interfering. I was going to say, Drew, Drew's going to fucking cause Uso his title. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to have it. He's going to do the splash and then, oh, McIntyre. And then what's going to happen is I think it's going to be Uso versus Drew at the Royal Rumble. Or a triple threat. For the title, you think? Yeah. Because then Jimmy could cost McIntyre again. They could do like a backlash thing or whatever. You know what I'm kind of getting tired of, even though as much as I love him, I love him a lot. Cody Rhodes, his story right now. I am tired of all the goddamn distractions. Not distractions. It's just, it's literally filler opponents for now until we get to where we need to get with him and Roman for part two. And it's fucking annoying. Like, I'm just. But we're there already. I'm just like, oh, he's just every time, okay, we're back on the path. And then Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm just like, yeah, that was that was a random. Dumb. I was like, now we're off the path again. They're definitely gonna do that for the rumble, and then drop it immediately. He was a, little bit. a tag team champion for one week. That that was a dumb decision, and it's the only titles he's held in WWE since his return. Ain't that sad? To be fair, what other title would you get him besides? I would have thrown him like an Intercontinental Championship or something for now or fucking United because he could have made that shit fucking blown up. Gunter, I think, uh, has done a great job. I love Gunter. I love it. He is such a great performer. Yeah. And a great storyteller. He's a great brawler. Great brawler. His chops are second to none. <sighs> His chops are, can you hear it from the fucking round the globe? Um, and I think the storyline they're doing Wait, with what's him. That? Someone just got shot. <laughs> so I, I think... Him being the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time is such great storyline. Like yes. Triple H is solidifying. He's purposely under his regime making all these. Well, movies. Gunter under the UK was already a fucking beast. Yeah, the NXT so it only UK. makes sense. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Uh, Gunther is a fucking machine of a fucking wrestler. And my worry is once he loses Intercontinental Champion, I don't think he's going straight for the world title. And and if he does, is he losing? Is he just going to be in a losing streak? Well, you got to remember, too, it's it's going to be one of those things where either he goes for the World Heavyweight Championship or he goes for the Universal Championship because I think by the time we get to that area of where Gunther is no longer the Intercontinental Champion and I'm assuming there's no longer also an Imperium, I think he's solo by now. Um, I think what's going to happen is they're going to rebuild the character, probably go with the face turn maybe. Make him fat again. <laughs> but I think they're going to do with like an anti-hero face turn where it's like he's still going to be an He asshole. already seems like an anti-hero to me. Really? Yeah. I think like he's not bad, bad, but he's not good either. I always said he'd make a good Nazi in a World War II movie. Like a Nazi general. Yeah, I could see that. 100%. Yeah. Uh, it'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm like Cass Gunther in a fucking World War II movie. He's going to be the Nazi general. <laughs> and he wouldn't disappoint me. I don't think he's, no. I don't think he's German, but... <sighs> But no, anyway, he's, he's, not German, he's been on a fucking roll. Yes. And I'm glad they made him the Intercontinental. Like, Triple H is making sure all the record champions are under his regime. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I, I Fuck fucking... Fuck events. Like, like, I discovered Gunther, bro, and look what I made him now. Longest reigning Intercontinental champion of all time. He's like, I'm continuing uh, the Roman storyline. I could have squashed that shit a year ago if I wanted to. <laughs> they, I think I think as a as a whole, I think that's also within Nick Khan, dude. Nick Khan has say so in that. He's big time buddies with The Rock and that whole family. So, yeah, the not and not ah and not Wahi family. But yeah, his return was shocking. I saw it. he should have stayed a little longer. The Rock. Yeah, I don't. Not just don't, an appearance. I don't know. I think because him and uh, Cena McAfee oh. were recording a podcast of McAfee show in the same city that day. So they just were like, Hey, we're here. Let's, now. Use you, let's, yeah. let's do something. Um, but instantly the theory is, Oh, the rock and Roman and WrestleMania and this and that, like relax. I had heard that. I think they're going to do something this next WrestleMania season oh. versus Roman. They were supposed to do something at our WrestleMania, but Hollywood it only made sense. Well, he, he confirmed, he came out and confirmed that, they had plans for WrestleMania 39. Yeah, because it makes sense. It's Hollywood. Oh, yeah, but it, it, was, it was one of those things. I guess he just, his filming schedule was everywhere and just couldn't make it. He does too it. much. He does a lot. Like, he does a lot. Take it back a little, man. For real. So, like Black Adam bomb for the love of God. I enjoyed it, though. I really I did. never watched it. I thought it was good. 
I saw that tease at the end. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. pointless. James Gunn was like, yeah, we're going a different route. I'm it like, sucks for Henry, Henry Cavill, though. Hey, he's going to do a Warhammer series for uh, Amazon, which is based off a of famous video game. So, Yeah, but I, I, a lot of people liked him as a Witcher. I never watched it. Or I watched two episodes and then couldn't get into it. You know why he left, right? No. The essentially the creators of the show wanted to go like a whole original route where he wanted to stay loyal to like the books and the lore of the story and they the the creators of the show didn't really like the books and stuff, so they wanted to do their own thing and so he kind of had creative differences. So then he did his last he fulfilled his contract and did his last season and then they wrote him off and now I think it's Liam Hensworth that's the new Witcher. Oh, okay. I thought it was just like it was either the Witcher or Superman. I'd rather do Superman. No. And then he, Superman got canned, like, oh, how sad. Yeah. Yeah, he just, it was one of those things where he just had creative differences. He's like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Yeah. I'm going to go do it. And then Amazon said they wanted to do a Warhammer series. And he was like, I guess he's like the lead on that project. Like he's going to do it loyal to the books and the games and stuff. So, and he's supposed to star in it as well. So I think he's an executive producer on it. So we'll see what happens. Oh, shit. Sure. Amazon's coming up, bro. The boys. Gen V. The boys, that's good. I haven't seen Gen V. Gen V's good. It's trippy. I can't wait for season four, though, for the boys. Yeah. Actually, Gen V sets up. It's in between season three and season four of the boys, so it sets up season four. And then I heard the boys are going to set up season two of the Gen V. Yeah, they're they're going back and forth because the guy who's the showrunner now for the boys on Amazon, he was the showrunner for Supernatural. Oh, so that's okay. why you're seeing, like, Jensen Ackles come on the show. You see a lot of people that were on Supernatural – coming over to the boys and gen v they had um the guy who played the antichrist on um supernatural he was on gen v as one of the fucking students and stuff um jeffrey dean morgan is supposed to be in season four of the boys, the boys so i'm excited for that and then fucking carl urban's gonna be in mortal kombat 2 as johnny cage that's an interesting cast right and they're gonna and they're filming it right now i'm excited i love the first mortal kombat was solid the new one was pretty good yeah um i feel like you could have took out the main guy who was supposed to be like a descendant of Scorpion and it still would have went on the same way. Like, yeah. I feel like he served no purpose in the movie, but that's just me. I don't remember enough, but I just remember I was like, not bad. The fighting was great. Yeah. Yeah. And then the references to the game were awesome. So I'm excited to see what they do with the second one, especially with him being Johnny Cage. He'd be like, Oh, hey, it's Billy Butcher. I'm like, no, it's Johnny Cage. <laughs> I've always it, loved it. It threw me off. Because I seen him in The Boys, and I never connected him to Thor Ragnarok. Oh, as the executioner? Yeah, I was like, holy shit. He also played Judge Dredd in Dredd. I never watched that movie. Dude, Dredd is good. I, lo I love the Judge Dredd comic books, so like to see the, the Stallone one, that's a classic. You who I am? <laughs> <laughs> but to have that, and then to have like fucking, um, to have him and... and uh, Carl Urban, Carl Urban played Judge Dredd in the new one. It was just called Dredd. And that was more darker and more. That was like in 07 or something, right? Uh, 2010 or 11, I think. Oh, shit. But yeah, it's, it's a good so movie. Well. And I heard, heard Amazon wanted to do a spinoff or they wanted to do a show and they bought, they wanted both Stallone and Carl Urban to come back to reprise the role of Judge Dredd. I was like, multiverse much? Or what's we doing, Amazon? Yeah, a lot of people are going that route. Dude, everyone's going to fucking Amazon. Uh, we just got done watching uh, The Fall of the House of Usher. Have you seen that on Netflix? No, I don't have Netflix right now. Oh, dude. If you get Netflix, man. Uh, I'm a huge... I've been getting into this director, Mike Flanagan. Okay. He directed uh, The Haunting of Hill House and wrote this and executive produced it. Uh, he did The Haunting of Blind Manor, The Midnight Mass, The Midnight Club, and then his most recent work, uh, The Fall of the House of Usher which is about every episode is Edgar Allan Poe based. Oh. Uh, I love Edgar Allan Poe. Um, but he also directed the sequel to The Shining, Dr. Sleep. I don't know if you saw that movie. That movie no. was phenomenal. I re No, not recently. Like two years ago, I watched um, The Shining. Did you like it? No. What? No. Why? It just dragged. That's the point. You're supposed to see this guy go mad. Uh. And the, and you're and the to climax see, looked like you're supposed what? to see like the hotel start coming alive. Like the hotel is supposed to be alive, essentially, because yeah, yeah. of all the all the spirits and shit. Well, I remember we did the dude. That shit was how called. did you? Did, how did you not like that, dude? It's one of the greatest movies ever made. Jack I know it's it's, so it's sad for me to to be like, oh, this was a hype. It's. I think it's also. Are you a are you a Stanley Kubrick fan? 
He's the director of The Shining. What was his work? Uh, Full Metal Jacket. He's done that movie. Um, Clockwork Orange. That's a famous movie he did, no, too. I know um, the people. <laughs> 2001 A Space Odyssey. He did that movie. Yeah, dude. I've never seen any of these. Yeah, he's such a great director, but he's a very interesting director. Um, and when it came to doing The Shining, he was not a fan of Stephen King's book at all. So he kind of did his own thing. He changed a lot of things in the book. Oh, okay. But uh, I love Stanley Kubrick, man. He's such a good uh, director. Yeah, I heard so much good things about The Shining. Then there was that pop-up that we did. Oh, I like scary movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like scary movies. That was fun, the art exhibit. Yeah. That was really fun. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give this a chance. Finally put it on. I'm like, oh. Doctor Sleep is actually a lot better in my opinion. It's well, so has a fucking Obi-Wan, right? Yeah. He he's plays the boy Danny. Like yeah, and later. then he senses another girl or something, right? Yeah, that, yeah. that can shine. I kind of, I kind of know. Yeah, like it's a little bit. such a good movie, though, dude. Like they, they even did some like shot for shot remakes of like some scenes from The Shining, and it's so spot on of like the actors they got to like the scenes and stuff. Um, and then to to revisit the hotel again after all these years, it was just like one of those things where it was like nostalgic. It was like, dude, he enters the hotel, and like as he enters the minute he opens the doors the lights start slowly dimming on and shit it's like the hotel knows he's coming in like that right there is the reason why i want to go out to colorado because they have the real shining hotel out there the stanley, yeah i've the seen uh hotel. justin scarred the stanley hotel dude i want to stay there so bad that'd be tight go mad <laughs> stay there a week let it let let yourself be snowed in be like darling <laughs> i'm not gonna kill you I'm just going to record a podcast with you. <laughs> that should be your intro for the weird and strange. <laughs> Dude, we've been, it's been, yeah, it, that, I want to, we're going to get back to the shooting that pretty soon too. I'm, it's been a fun, that's been a fun one to do. Can't wait. You want to have like two episodes on? Huh? Yeah, we actually, we filmed a few uh, episodes, oh. uh, but then like now I looking back at them, they're all outdated. So like now we're going to start fresh and, um, you know, I'm texting her right now, making sure she's okay. <laughs> I haven't been texting her so often. Oh. Uh, well, I have, but it's like since I got here, I was like, uh, I got to uh, over. text over here. Over. I told her what I was doing tonight, but. Um, she's like, who? What? what are you talking about? Now she's like, I wish you would tell me these things. I'm like, I'm sorry. I forgot. I mean, it was kind of last minute. It slipped my mind. Yeah, it was. So it's okay though. we made it work. Yeah. But uh, dude, four years can't believe it's been that long. I'm glad that... Uh, the way I think about it, I'm like, I graduated high school again. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's, that's, uh, that's so cool, dude. I, I'm glad this is all working out for you. This this, you. this studio is incredible. Um, I can't wait to see where the future holds for the studio when you have more guests here yeah. um, and all that stuff and, and whatnot. Maybe we can bring some celebrities in here. I mean, I mean I was, I, I'm I could, pretty sure someone would like it. Make a phone call or something. I'll see what's <laughs> up. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is cool. I, I was telling you before this too. This would be a great area to do a Dungeons and Dragons. You know, just even, not enough. Even if we wanted to add an extra seat, real quick, we can put like a chair at the end of the <laughs> a day. Very small person. Yeah, you know, like, and it's not even gonna be a nice chair. It's gonna be like fucking a regular a chair. shitty one. Yeah, you don't you deserve one. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford another one. Yeah. <laughs> but this this is cool, dude. I'm I'm I, I mean, walking in, dude. It's like you have it all like. Like yeah. a maze. It's a maze, dude. It's awesome. And then you come in and like this is the set, dude. And then like, you get pound. Yeah, this was this was really cool, man. I'm I'm glad that we got to film an episode of shoot the shit in here. A little bonus episode too, because we haven't done an episode in a while. But I when you when you asked to you know, you wanted to do a podcast, dude, I was like, Yeah, dude, let's do Perfect. it. Perfect. I know the one. Yeah, I really wanted to be like promote myself, but I'm like, the only guy I can know is you. So I'm like, gotta go out it. Hey man, I got the platform, let's do it. Hell yeah. And then you 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 came in clutch with everything. <laughs> I mean everything I was not prepared for this Like <laughs> When you showed me this I'm like Oh we gotta shoot the podcast in here dude Like this is We have to show this off This is We have to test everything Make sure it's going good And <laughs> I don't know man I mean I, I can't wait to look at all the footage and stuff And everything And then just kind of Go back and forth It's gonna be there. a lot of fun Yeah It's gonna be a lot of fun But uh Hey Let the audience know Where, they, where can they find you Uh I was gonna say my own channel Fausto Pebbles No I am Fausto Pebbles Um YouTube Uh Pebbles Infinity, Instagram Pebbles Infinity, and I just started a TikTok, hopefully soon, uh, Pebbles Infinity as well. Going to start podcasting, Pebbles Infinity podcast, uh, all things nerd, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars. All the fun stuff. All the fun stuff. Movie reviews. 
There's, there's a lot of topics we can talk about. An infinite amount of topics. <laughs> An amount of topics. I mean, right behind me, I got three infinity <laughs> gauntlets and all the infinity stones, multiple. Uh, there's at least probably... What, 5, 10, 3, 15? 20 infinity stones in front yep. of me, back of me. It's all from the multiverse. <laughs> it's like that Loki scene. It's just yeah, paperweights. It's just about paperweights. I'm just like, <laughs> what? I'm sorry. You just used the power stone as a damn paperweight? How dare you disrespect them? I'm like, you're not... Excited. I'm like, this is pointless now. <laughs> I'm like, you're not freaking scared that it's going to fucking maybe blow up the entire office? Very casual. I point. saw what Thanos did with that thing off Thor's ship, dude. I'm like, what the hell? Fucking shit, dude. They don't even care. They just put the... No. Dude, a power stone. Just put it down. This is casual. I'm like, it's melting through the fucking table. It just blows up everything. Like, you guys are idiots. That would have been funny. Yeah, that should it, be another like. That's multi- literally that's literally what I thought too. After I watched Loki, I'm like, so the Infinity Stones literally serve no purpose. That's the like sad part about. I'm what like, we went. There. I I I I went on a ten year journey. You're telling me it was for nothing. I looked these at stones my, have no fucking purpose. I looked at myself in the back and I go, God damn! That all these people did not have to disappear, and this motherfucking Tony Stark did not have to die, and Captain America didn't have to get old. I'm like I th- th- It was all for nothing I'm like you just- No no Cause it's a sacred time <laughs> Dude Oh my god uh, I, I, I'm excited to see Where the channel goes This time around uh, I was A big fan In 2019 of The first 200 uh, I'm excited to see Where the next 200 go Journey wise um, Hopefully we'll see you guys Back in the theme parks um, We'll see <laughs> Yeah I know It's a little bit pricey But uh there's uh, a lot of things you can my, do. My thought process is start off as not yeah. then Universal. We'll see if Disney gets their shit together. <laughs> you know, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, starting at Knott's is good, especially, uh, are you planning on going anytime soon or are you going to wait till next year? Wait till next year. Uh, see it, if I get a job. Start it fresh with Boysenberry Festival. That's where you start. Boys and Bear is always a bomb. Always bomb, dude. And you can take the whole family for that one. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, you do your filming. You let them do their thing, but... Go off. Leave me yeah. alone. <laughs> That's awesome, though, dude. Congratulations on uh, overall getting married in the last the four years since I've seen you. Uh, having an awesome wife that it looks like you, she supports everything you do. You support everything she does. I mean, we've been together 12 years, so... 12 years, dude. Since high school, you would say? Yeah. High yeah. school. Uh, sophomore year. And we went to the same high school. Yeah. Uh, just you're, different You're years. younger, I think. How old are you? Uh, 28. 28? Yeah. I'm 25. So about three years. So I graduated 2013. I graduated in 16. Oh, shit, three. So I was there when you were there. Yeah, for okay. a moment. For a little for bit. For a blimp. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It, so, I'm, you know, I'm happy that, you know, you're married now, dude. You got a family. You got a nice house. Yeah. You know, you Very got the, blessed. the studio. I mean, Life literally gave you the golden handshake and was like, this is for you, man. We're gonna- <laughs> you deserve this. You, deserve you worked this. so hard. Yeah, man. Congratulations. I, I, I love everything about this, man. I mean, the studio is so cool. I mean, it's going to be even cooler when you get the Batman logo in here, you know, but that'd be cool. Hell so. yeah. Appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you so much. I can't wait to see what you do. If you guys want to see what Fosto is going to do, man. Uh, if you want to check out the room yourself a yeah. little more in detail, you know. Got a room tour coming soon, I'm assuming. Yeah, hopefully in a month. I want to. In the next month, yeah. yeah. Uh, but what can we expect uh, for the first kind of build up? Are we going to see a little bit more in studio content for the time? In studio, being? all that stuff on top is for unboxings right here. All this, all stuff. this huh? All this. This is unboxings. Oh, hopefully. Man, ready. We find a topic. I'm going to get my friends here and discuss what first topics we should bring in and do another podcast, hopefully weekly. That'd be fun. So we'll see. Yeah. I know balancing that dad life, the the yeah. husband life, and, and, the, and the YouTube life, and then just a little you time life. And just life in general. Just life. Yeah. It's it's one of those things, man. I know. Just kick sometimes. Then. Yeah. It's, um, it's, I'm just, I'm glad. I mean, you... I've been trying to figure out this whole, like, you know, especially going forward, you know, we're going to do bringing back podcasts and stuff, but, uh, keep, Oh, I'm fidgety. <laughs> I'm fidgety. Anyway. Um, yeah. I'm excited I'm, for the future. I am, man. We're going to do, we're, uh, starting, uh, next week, we're bringing back Miles for podcast. Um, oh. actually maybe no, uh, maybe this Friday, uh, we're bringing it out Some, today. No, uh, so. <laughs> next Friday. Oh, I don't even uh, know when you're releasing this, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, releasing yeah. this next Monday. So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I think next, next Friday, uh, we're bringing back the mindless horror podcast, interviewing characters again. Um, I know you missed this month, huh? 
we were going to do Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Uh, it just became sort of a scheduling conflict God. Um, because of my, my work hours. I'm 3 to 11.30. And Did that just would, change? Uh, that's been effective since October 2nd. So kind of haunt season was a little bit of a struggle too. Yeah. Just a little bit. But uh, we got through it. <laughs> I don't know what next year is going to be like. Um, we'll try our best to do what we can to do things. But, yeah, it kind of sucks when I don't have a Thursday or a Friday night to really go out and do things. It, it really blows. I only really get now Saturdays and Sundays. So yeah. um, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, dude, I mean, um, so we were going to do Scare Actor Appreciation Month, but I just couldn't find time to do interviews not everyone stays up till fucking five in the morning like i do yeah i know when you're like i'm willing to do it after work i go oh perfect because i, I love like, this what you okay, got I, I didn't think yeah it's, it's really hard to like to do and then you're like well let's do it in studio and i was like i would love to it's just my like i have a lot of most of my family already sleeping and then you're like well you just come to my place i'm like all right cool and then i see this room i'm like shit dude it looks like we could just be not as loud as we want but we can we can talk a hundred percent a hundred percent loud yeah. and it's like it's not really bothering Doesn't, anybody you know it's mm-hmm. like it's it's really cool. So like that's what I liked about Separate it. Separate from the house, so like good lighting. I don't gotta worry about the kid. I don't gotta worry about the wife. It's just yeah, the kids probably thing here. kids probably on his way to bed already. You know, or does the kid stay up all night? He is a night night out too. Yeah, just like his dad. Well, he made me be a night. <laughs> 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 I have no choice but to stay up with him. Like, come on, kid, that's, go to sleep. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, I, I'm excited for for that route eventually we'll see what happens with that route down the line yeah maybe it becomes a little troublemaker <sighs> the next because he's so calm that i'm like uh, you're gonna be a troublemaker i know it should be i, I can't wait to see this kid grow up it's gonna be <laughs> funny i'm excited you're back man uh and i cannot wait to see the adventures that come with the uh, with the new brand with the rebrand um and yeah, man, I I can't wait to see what the podcast is about. I can't wait to. Uh, well, I don't know if about your time, but hopefully, either today or another day, you. Hey, stay man, for I, I, if we're gonna do another podcast, man, the only thing I got to do is take a piss. And oh, that it. makes you perfect. That's where we cut off. There we're going there, <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, a bonus episode of Shoot the Shit, uh, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, it has been great sitting in studio with with Fosto again, and uh, just. Looking at this studio, it's giving me ideas for a future studio for me and, and how I want things set up. I mean, I love everything about this. You did a phenomenal job in here. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Congratulations. And uh, let's see what the future holds, right? Yes, sir. For both of us. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, for sure, man. So if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. The bell notification be where every time I put up a new video, hit that like button and leave some comments down for Fosto. And go ahead and follow Fosto on his new uh, it, it, adventures. Uh, part two of his uh, continuation of YouTube, uh, Pebbles Infinity. Uh, or Infinite? Uh, Infinity. Yeah. Infi- Infinity? Yeah. Okay. Infinity it is, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what happens, but uh, go check them out. But with no, if nothing else, we will see you guys uh, real soon for the Miles Four podcast, and uh, yeah, have a great one. Later. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man.